Uh, welcome back to Firecast Season 1, Episode... 12. 12? Okay. Yes, um, with my co-host, DZ. What's cracking? And today we've got uh, Joey on the episode. What's goody? <laughs> <All laughs> right. Thanks for coming, bro. Yeah, this is... Um, time. You've been keen to come on for a while, eh? So yeah, I've been, little f- f- been fanboying <laughs> yeah. boys for quite a while now, but no, nah, it's good. It's good to see what you boys are doing, especially because I actually know you, so it's yeah. like, it's mm. different. Like when an artist comes... He's popping and you don't know him. You don't appreciate it as much. Yeah, fucking know. You appreciate know. it from guys from the area and stuff coming up. And you, yeah, it's been popping your shit. You. It's good. It's fucking know. Yeah, you, you're always you're always showing <laughs> heaps, man, support. Well, it's good. That's all I agree. It's good to like support people, especially from the area. Because especially Western Sydney, we always look down as, as like the fucking, you know. Deros. Like Deros <laughs> and shit like that. So especially, with, I feel like we do okay with music out here. So yeah. That's, that's Lately, good. fuck yeah. Um, well, so my first question, Joey, is um, so obviously you don't produce and make music and stuff like that. So this no, question no. is going to be not directed in production, but more so because I know for a fact that you love rap and you listen to rap. Like you don't just, I know for a fact you're not one of those guys that just listens to like the beat and just sort of like, you're listening yeah, to yeah. the lyrics and what these yeah, fuckers yeah, are saying sure. and yeah. shit like that, well, right? I'll, yeah. So you, you're for, is rap your first like genre that you've listened to because i know personally most people don't start off listening to rap i know i didn't i started off listening to fucking hard style yeah, and yeah. then from hard style i started listening to puck and then from yeah. puck i was like holy fuck i think i love rap and then i start and then it, that's how it, but for me it always started with electronic music and i yeah. feel like i know a lot of people start for some reason with electronic music and I, it's either i don't know because you go to parties or yeah. shit like that but was is it always been rap for you or did you start with something else it's all like back in the day, it was like old school R&B and hip hop, Ja Rule, Ashanti, fuck, yeah, you know, like yeah. Chris Brown when he yeah. was coming up, like all that Lil Wayne, like yeah. Drake when he was young money and all that. And then eventually it kind of, music changes, as you know, over the years, you listen know. to a song back in the day without knowing when it was made. You can tell that it was an old school track, you know, by the beats and the sounds, but then it's kind of like, as it progressed, I would start just listening to the beat and then people would spit over beats and then mm-hmm. more more complex artists would jump on the beat and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And I would always watch um, on YouTube, do you know street rap battles when there's yeah, acapella? Yeah, 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 and yeah, I'd yeah, go yeah. like, and we're just dissing each other and people get cut, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I would watch that and be, and I would lose my shit. And mm-hmm. then eventually, because they're very slow at, at spitting, easier to pick up. Then you add a beat to it and then, you know, rappers are coming out spitting heaps of bars at a time. So I would look up genius lyrics online heaps and then I would mm. not uh, be satisfied until I would nail it. Like in the car, you have ample time to listen to shit. Yeah, fucking hell. And when I would nail a verse, I would act like I spat it. Like those, <laughs> those yeah. are my bars. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. You know, and like DNA by Kendrick yeah. is one of the fastest verses I've ever heard. And mm. that alone, I was like in the car just spitting to that. So it was kind of like a... I could, I can, I can uh, hear a lot more than most people, but mm-hmm. also a lot of people are in my boat as well. The same boat, like yourself, yeah, obviously DT yeah, and yeah. you, Iggy. I'm assuming, but for example, my Mrs. Tori, she, she, when I show her a song, I want her to appreciate it as much as me. So I'll be in the car and be like, "Yeah, listen to this, this," and then he will drop a verse, a certain person, and I'll be like, "Look at her, like, did you see that? Like, did you hear that?" And she's like, "Yeah, sweet." Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, no, no, doesn't yeah. understand. So it's kind of frustrating that not. not everyone can join you on that journey and appreciate it <laughs> yeah. as much but like when you dz when you spit like your even your latest shit like lemon pepper the oh, remix the freestyle, yeah. it you're i'm not even joking you can confirm this with tori i told her as soon as i got home you made me miss a exit ramp on the m7 <laughs> no, you did because i was like i was hearing it for the first time boom i clicked at youtube so not the you, you uploaded it to instagram the first half mm-hmm. i followed it up with a youtube thing it showed me the whole thing Bro, it was like I missed the thing, and I ended up going uh, driving almost to work, which is, <laughs> which is it takes me forty minutes to get to work, and I was yeah. ten minutes from work, and I had to drive back around. So I might as well play it again, so I was playing yeah, it again. Fuck yeah, yeah. Oh, I love yeah, it, bro. Yeah, love yeah it. that was a good one, bro. And uh, fun fact, I didn't swear at all once in that. I, I, oh, I swear. Yeah, I didn't swear once. <laughs> so he'll, he'll cut it out and shit. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. No, but it's, I don't know, man. It's, That's fucking mad. <laughs> bro, trust me, oh, I swear to God, bro, like a no word of a lie. Like, yeah, okay, I was a bit, I was a bit, had a bit to smoke, <laughs> but that's nothing to do with it, bro. Like I was, I wasn't just driving. I was like, like, do you know, you're listening and oh, you're like, yeah. so I wasn't just like, eh. I was like, and yeah, you were talking about, um, you're like, most of these people would just go through life without, 
knowing their meaning basically yeah, and i'm trying to leave my mark you know what i mean yeah. and then uh fuck what else man there's so many bro. if it plays i within two three songs of your song playing i i i know some words to it already <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's hectic Fuckin Oh, it's all good, bro. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Okay. Um. So cool. Now I'll direct that same question to DZ because yes, sir. you you've never really been into EDM, have you? Not really. It's always been th- a the little words bit. for you. Yeah, pretty much. Right. I I didn't like music up until like. You realize you could rap or year, nah, <laughs> like year seven, bro. <laughs> I didn't like music, like period. And then um, you'd always play shit in your room, usually like yeah. EDM, sometimes Hobson and shit. <laughs> and that's really where I kind of started getting into music. So it kind of has always been rap for me, mm-hmm. to be honest. Because by the time I got into rap, that's what I was listening to, Hobson. I like fucking sag my pants and you know that yeah, era. Yeah, well that yeah. So when when Hobson was first blowing up with funk volume, that's what I was into because I was listening to Puck as well, mm-hmm. and then. I was listening to Funk Volume and then that's when I found Odd Future and that's when I really fucking like dove deep. Like I listened to every single Odd Future member, any one of their albums, EPs, whatever you name it, I've heard it. Yeah. And you, I listened to it. Yeah. <laughs> what, bro. what happened to Odd Future? They were there for a bit, but didnn't they? They split up. They, they split, split up. up yeah. Earl it, Sweatshirt, didn't he get something about he was in New Zealand or something and he, had to, he couldn't come back? He got sent well, to Samoa sent, or something, or didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> his mum didn't like but his did you, lifestyle or something. Did you ever see that film clip? I don't forget what song it was, but they all just eat drugs. They put it in, in the blender and shit. They yeah, put yeah, it in the yeah, blender. Yeah, they yeah. start. Obviously, I'm assuming maybe it was fake, but when I watched it, I was like, "This is 100 percent real." They're bleeding from their noses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, I'm pretty sure it was convulsing. Fake, but yeah, so uh, I remember because there was a few statuses between like Hodgie and Tyler. It, it, it all obviously starts from Tyler because mm-hmm. Tyler was like the one who. The head. In, he was like the head. He invented it, come up with Odd Future. And then um, he started to blow up a little bit more than the rest of them. And he hit the more mainstream side. Mm. And you don't know what happens behind closed doors. Like with a big group like that, anything can happen. People don't see eye to eye, different ideas, different visions, want to take the group in a different direction. But Tyler started really blowing up and started doing shit with like ASAP Rocky and shit like that. Like he was getting real like radio attention. And the rest of them weren't really blowing up as much. So it could have been something to do with that. Um, I know for a fact I did some research, Earl Sweatshirt was getting real heavy on the drugs. And like, I'm not talking about like just party drugs. I'm talking like heroin and shit. He was deep in it. Like if you listen to the song Hive with him and Vince Staples, I'm pretty sure in that video clip, he's fucking fried out of his brain. Like it's a scary clip, bro. They got like masks and sold demonic (laughs) and shit. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably why he got demoted to border to wherever the fuck he got sent. But I don't really know what happened. All you know is that they break up and it's the end of a very, very... Good era. Good era of yeah. music, man. Like, um, Same thing happened with Hobson and Funk Volume. They Funk broke Vol- up too. <laughs> but it, why did they break up though? Because I know Hobson's been going through some personal shit though for years. Yeah, was but that something to do with his kid? Or nah. he can't see his kid? Oh, that was song. with his, his missus from his uh, missus. She's from Australia. She's from fucking local where it's. She's from around here, apparently I think. She, <laughs> apparently he used to go skating at fucking St. Mary's Skate Bowl and, yeah. and, 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 and cunts would flock there because Hobson was there for the day. Like, yeah. But but his, fuck, uh, man. They, they broke up, I think, over... Um, so Dame or something was a co-manager, Swizz's brother, I think, mm-hmm. and it was money problems or something. Hobson made whole ill mind eight about it. It's all it's always money problems. Yeah, usually it's, it's always <laughs> money. Crazy problems. as some like somewhere or another, like some artists just fall out and some adapt and stay with yeah. it. You mm. know what I mean? Like yeah, I don't yeah. know, man. You got to just try and be like that's why some people they don't like artists that change, but you have to change. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, you, Eminem's the biggest example. Oh, oh yeah, biggest oh, yeah. bro. Everyone, I hate. Him and Kendrick, when Kendrick released how, uh, To Pimp a Butterfly, yeah. after he uh, did that album, what is it, Section 80 maybe? I, I forget. I might be missing an album, but everyone shat on him, bro. And yeah, then yeah, Eminem, yeah. man. Yeah, Same Eminem thing. flopped on an album, whatever. Like, But, mm. he, man, how can we, from us regular people sitting on the couch at home, be so critical of yeah. these guys that are 100%. well beyond us? Yeah, of, <laughs> you know fucking no. I mean? Like, But I don't know, man. You just got to adapt, I guess. And that's what I feel like when with you, DZ, like you're – lyricism is isn't shallow at all bro you know what i mean at the like when i first listened to i think super villain was the first song i heard of you and that was uh even from then to now bro was a big you've come a long oh, way yeah, for you know sure, what i mean bro. you can tell man for sure so it is uh I, I reckon you'll be able to adapt though through the years it's just some people can't for some reason and, or just i don't know the stars don't align or and and that's what it's about too like i'm 
I look forward to being able to change and adapt and trying new styles. And I always want to kind of try change it up where I can. But like super villain, that was that wasn't very deep at all. I don't think I had maybe. Mm. Nah, we were fucking um, around a lot on that. And oh, I yeah. still do that, man. Like, I, to be honest with me, when it comes, I like making music with a lot of feeling and depth when I can, when it comes to me. But what's more fun for me really is clever patterns, mm-hmm. you know, because I listen to a lot of Tech Nine and Ritz and shit. That's yeah. what I'm looking. Yeah. So it's rhyming all the internal words, you know what I mean? Mm. So that's the fun funnest part for me but obviously sometimes when i'm feeling a type of way and you get in the studio it just takes over yeah. you man you can't be full in your feels drake all the time mm. you got to be like it's fun to talk shit you got to talk yourself up talk shit it's that's that's what it's about as well you it's like I mean? a sport i always think of it as a sport yeah. rapping like intricate rapping and make creating intelligent patterns that's that's fun to me it's like a puzzle you know trying yeah. to figure out the best way to make these words rhyme so yeah, like it's yeah. I mean, it is going to be hard, especially like I've always said, when we start to get more like popular and a, a bit of a bigger audience. Um, it's going to be hard. That's why I said in, I think a couple of episodes ago, it's so hard for me to now like, for example, my my EP probably could have been done this week, but I've just been playing games all week because I've just <laughs> needed a break, bro. Like you need yeah. that mental break because it gets to the point where, especially for me, I can make something right, and it could sound way better than what the next bedroom producer can make, right? Way better. And they'd probably dream to be able to make what I just did. But to me, I just hate it. And I'm like, "Mm, fuck this. And like the amount of decent shit I've deleted over the past couple of months, especially this year, I reckon if if DZ like heard it, he'd probably slap me. (laughs) So do you ever keep, if you're not 100% sure with something, do you just scrap it or do you throw it out? And and, or do you keep it in, you know, in the backlog and then maybe come back to it later? Because some, you might feel mm -hmm. it one day. Have you ever heard a track and you're like, nah, and then you, you hear it again later or you have to warm up to it? Yeah. I don't know. Or, or do you know from the start, Iggy, do you know if when you make it, you're like, nah, that's that's not it? Or you're like, oh, it has mm, potential. Some see, I do have like a throwaway folder or like sometimes I keep things that I know I can go back to. But if I get in this, like in a mood where I'm in a real sour mood and I'm just not feeling it, mm. I'll go, nah. I can't, I can't do this. Like, I'm not feeling it. I'm not coming back to this. So I just get rid of it because it takes up space on my computer. Fuck that, bro. But there is a <laughs> lot of songs where I, I've left them for like even a couple of days. Even like if I just go have a break for an hour and I come back and I go, oh, okay, fuck, this is actually okay. That happened. That's that happens all the time. Like the song, um, my song, uh, my latest uh, floodlights, my latest dance track, right? That was a like 100 percent throwaway. A complete throwaway, but that was a throwaway where that track was basically done, and I I was like, oh mm, I got it finished to the end, and I went, fuck this shit, and I just crossed it off, right? But I didn't delete it, and then I went back to it like at the start of this year, and I just randomly saw it on my PC. I'm like, oh, what the fuck is this? I opened it, and I'm like, what the fuck? This is almost finished. Listen to it, and I'm like, mm, you know what? I might as well just release it rather than just delete it. Fuck it. Did a few little changes and then released it. Like I don't even fucking like the song, but I just fucking. You no, know I, I mean? do. I do that all the time, like, yeah. bro. Because the way I think about it is, if you don't like it, bro, someone else will, man. It doesn't matter how many people don't like it, like, because your fan base, man, they want to hear different shit. And I, like, I have a lot of songs I don't like that I've released. Yeah. Especially after all these changes I've made, and I know that I've improved, and then I go back and listen to my old shit or sometimes. You, like, like, okay. you know, but people like it, so. I would guess some people are more about the quality than quantity. And then you got yeah. like, like instead of releasing almost everything you record, mm-hmm. some people just want to, you know, you know, when they go through their their Spotify playlist, they want to hear banger after banger. Not that, not that that's what you're not aiming for. Like obviously, mm. you're aiming for that every time, but maybe some people want to filter out the mediocre yeah, I, shit. I, I, I feel I mean? that for sure. I definitely see that. But it's just the way I work, man. It's just like, you know, I'm. I'm too fast paced, bro. Like yeah, I just yeah. like dropping shit. Well, you're putting out music like no tomorrow, and it's yeah. crazy that it's fun. <laughs> yeah, but isn't it crazy? Like the more you blow up, eventually people don't have to do as much. Like eventually, when you get yeah. to the point where you're like Jay Cole's about Jay to, Cole, he's about to, about to say, drop yeah. midnight. He's about to drop an interlude, a part of his album, and bro, everyone is frothing because he's got himself there where he's done the work. He's doing what you've done, and and just been all over the shop like with all, all these music, and then now. You just wait for it, mm. but you got to get there first. I remember you talking about it, you guys, in one of your podcasts before. Yeah, yeah. you have to get yourself there in order to get there. You can't release. I think you said it, Daisy. Mm. You got to put out shit, otherwise people don't want to. Exactly. You know? If if you're not established, you exactly don't have the right. big enough foundation. People aren't going to wait for you, bro. They'll forget about you, man. <laughs> like mm. two hundred monthly listeners, like what we got. 
If we stop, it's just going to go down, bro. <laughs> People yeah. don't wait around yeah. unless you're fucking yeah, Drake yeah. or fucking oh, J. No. Cole. Well, perfect example, because since uh, Spirit and Jackal, when we released Spirit and Jackal, I I cracked like 180 monthly listeners. And now because I haven't released anything in ages, I'm down all the way back mm-hmm. to like 60. It goes down, bro. you so got to put in the hard yards. You know what I mean? Oh, like you, you lo- people, you got to keep it in people's faces. You got to keep it in people's face, almost to the point of spam. You got to keep it there. You got to stay relevant, see, relevant. You see, know what I mean? You, I thought for some reason when you said uh, listeners, I just thought that straight away when they listen to your shit, your number stays that way. But listeners means mm-hmm. just who's currently listening. Yeah, yeah. Not, monthly listeners. Not monthly. your followers. Yes. No. So you okay. have fo- you have Spotify followers and then you've got the listeners. And when you click on someone's Spotify, what it shows under their name is the monthly listeners. So that's when, so J- Eminem would be some, however many million or J. Cole would be a hundred thousands. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it shows for everyone, but it fluctuates. So yeah. you know, if you have one, if you drop a album one month, you, your listeners will go up heaps, mm-hmm. and then after that month, if you don't drop anything for a while, they will, yeah. it'll just decline. So ideally, you want to go for you want to release minimum one track a month, mm-hmm. minimum. Yeah, and you have to yeah. try find that balance between quality and quantity. It's like yeah. what you were saying. Like I, I like releasing shit, but if I don't believe in it, and you know, I gotta, I gotta understand that it's pretty good like there's a certain threshold that you have to pass you know so you have to kind of yeah. keep that momentum but try keep your shit not trash that, at the that, same time that, uh, that red wine cypher had me feeling some type of way <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah the boys <laughs> killed that man, shit man like, like uh you're obviously in fine form, Dizzy. There's no no like uh surprise there but moby has two different mobies right <laughs> yeah moby yeah. has yeah again what was that song uh I was uh, playing it. Uh, no, nah, no, you can't see. But yeah, yeah, I like, I like, I like that one. Pain, <laughs> pain, bro, I, I was literally, I'd nothing. be at the gym, right? Yeah. And and you're supposed to be listening to the fucking shit. That <laughs> I'm listening. That comes on. I'm, I'm going to skip it. And I go, you know what? No, I'm singing about <laughs> a fucking breakup, bro. And you're but, fucking working out. Yeah, but when Mo B came in on the red wine cypher, bro, it's, I, t- I even inboxed him. I'm like, man, you have found, that's your rap voice. Don't like, I like his other shit as well. Don't get me wrong. It's, you got to have, it's good that he has two different aliases kind of thing. It feels like two different aliases. Yeah. You know, you know what kind of, yeah. but he's found that like that rhythm as well, bro. Let's I don't know who was, I don't know who was after you, DZ, but Blank he's Blank Blank right. He's good, I've bro. Heard, I've, Blank, ne- I've never heard of him. Uh, the Izzy flow, he killed that man. Both those boys killed that Easy Locks. Same with all of them. Same Moby. with Izzy Locks. Yeah, Izzy for sure. I agree with what Joey said about Moby. Izzy Locks also is the type of guy. He's got like two different personas because like he does a lot of R and B type like pop stoner vibes. Yeah, yeah. But, but then, he can bar out, but man. He can fucking rap. <laughs> he as can well, bar out, bro. But also, I'll give it to Izzy. When he when I initially heard him, I was like, "Oh no, he's trying to sound American, right?" Now this is honest. The mm. first, thing. but then I listened to one or two of his songs, but he does it in the sense that it's not like try like a try hard. Do you know what I mean? Like if nah, someone, it's it's, like a, it's it, Australian, it's Australian, Australian hip hop, uh, hip hop. But we um because obviously all music you hear from Australia takes influence from America, like unless, Kid Leroy. <laughs> yes. Unless you're Cursor, who completely yeah. takes the Aussie thing yeah. 100%. Pie, like that yeah. Kind of yeah. yeah, we're all, we all 100% it take shit from American mm. producers, rappers and stuff like that. So, yeah, the, the, it's going to sound the, American the for thing, sure. The thing with Izzy is when a lot of, when you start, like I started rapping a lot like that too because mm-hmm. of what you're saying. It's a lot of American culture, but yeah. it's like... I, I personally prefer just do, doing the whole Aussie thing, but Izzy owns that style, bro. Yeah, like yeah, he sure. he does there, the whole stoner thing with that that voice and the way he's he, and the way he no enunciates one, shit. It's yeah. it's good. There is no one in, I would think probably say the country that sounds like Izzy Locks, bro. No, and that's no, no cap. He's, yeah, yeah. he's that unique, but you can tell you can kind of tell he's not it. he's not American. You can tell it's a non American person, but that's what I'm saying. Like it doesn't mm. sound like he's trying too hard. Yeah, either. he's not trying yeah. to but, sound American. Yeah, it's just the yeah. way he's bought, yeah. like the way he's pronouncing shit. Yeah, yeah. and like even uh, Mary Jane, his song with also with Moby. Moby's but, on there, yeah. But yeah, but Izzy just goes hard all the time, man. Yeah. I love it. He's a he, great artist, man. He's um he's he's also his work rate is also very very crazy. Very similar to DZ because I, I, I've sent him um, the song me and him got together like Wavy. I sent him that beat and he sent back the whole verse and chorus that night. And I was like, oh, fuck. That's I was like, crazy, what man. See, I wonder, like, if, I wonder if his style of how he raps or, or at least gets his lyrics on the page is similar to you, DZ. Like, I wonder how you'd obviously know way more about this, but do you ever discuss with Mo B or, or Izzy or someone how they 
come up with what they come up with? Because surely it's different for every person, man. Like not really. We haven't really spoken about it. I mean, maybe I think spoke. We kind of touched on it a little bit when he was yeah, on. I know. I know for a one hundred percent fact. Moby does the whole listen to the beat and then just goes like mumbles a yeah. rhythm. And then goes back and starts filling in words. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, a lot of people do it like I that. I can imagine. I can imagine Izzy would do the same with the songs he makes mm. because he can flow all over those those beats. And then you, you go back and you fill it. I do that too, but more rarely because for me, I got to fucking, you know, I'm trying to do the word, 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 all rhyming. Like it's just fucking too fast for me to mumble sometimes. It's gotten to the point now, bro. I'll be watching that cipher. Like so, I sent that cipher to a mate from work, and then he's like, "Oh, who are those boys are on your show." Like yeah, just just my mates, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. And they're like, but like legit, they yeah. don't give, want to give you. But legit, this isn't anything against you guys. But they don't want to give anyone the time of day that isn't American or isn't well known. Yeah, of course. And, they, and that's how initially I was. I used to hate Aussie rap, hate it yeah. until I heard Rap Zombie by Chilling It, and then I went, hold up, who's this guy? Yeah. What looks? Listen to that road rage uh, spit that he done in mm-hmm. the car with his mates, sort of wombat, nerve, all those mm-hmm. kinds. And then yeah, I was kind of more open minded to the point where it kind of floods my phone now. That's like, the same yeah, as me. Yeah. yeah, that's the same as me because that newer generation, it's like it's a it's like an Australian take on American hip hop. You know what I mean? Like we're yeah. borrowing things and style, but we're doing it in an Aussie way, and that's yeah. what's so great about it. I think it's creating our own unique sound, but the words are getting more intricate, like complete. Like, Complete is a great rapper when it comes... He's very similar to me in the way that he's making very complex rhymes. And so, like, the fact that we have Complete and he's doing that in his fucking Aussie-ass accent. Have you listened to much Complete? No, I Either of you? I've never heard I've Complete. Never I'm not going to sit there he, and lie to you. No. Yeah, he's from, um, he's from Perth. Okay. And he's, he's got, a like, a real hard Aussie accent, but he raps his ass off, bro. And he, he it's, like, fast... It's a similar style to like you know intricate patterns, very fast wow, delivery. Okay, he's yeah, great, yeah. bro, and his his accent is full on Aussie. <laughs> like I you love can't, that man. That's hectic. That is fucking great. But that's that awesome. style is is like an American thing. That's yeah, that yeah. style. That way we rap. Yeah, no, that's fucking sick, man. See, I, I like the Aussie rap, man. I really do. But have you always been a fan though? Yep. Oh. Yep. Yeah, I've you always, liked Curse I've about all, yeah, yeah. three sixty and shit. Yep. Or? Yep. Okay. So 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 like I said when. So same thing, it all started when the big rap battles between Cursor and 360. Once that started sort of coming around the internet and stuff, I started listening to Pez, 360, Illy, um, Cursor, you know, a little bit of Forte, Enter. Like I, I've always loved that shit for ages. You know, even back in the, even way, way back when I was like in year seven, used to listen to like Schemo and Sky High and shit. And they were literally doing the, oh yeah, can't fucking get my stab yet. <laughs> they were literally doing that type of rap, bro. And I used to love it, bro. I loved it. I used to like a little bit of Cursor fucking back in the day. Bro, bro. I've got heaps of Cursor on my playlist, bro. He, he's, he, he's, he's actually pretty good, bro. <laughs> Honestly, like, like you can't, bad. you, you can't fucking fuck around and say that he really did help bring Australian rap to light, bro. Yeah, he definitely Because did. before Cursor, <laughs> what were we doing? There was no nothing. <laughs> there was, there was yeah. nothing. There was literally, like I said, before Cursor, you had Enter, Sky High, Schemo, but they were literally recording verses onto their phones and shit and putting it over beats. Cursor was one of the first who was fucking going to a studio. into a studio <laughs> and rapping about bashing people on the curb and shit like that. <laughs> like, so he really helped fucking bring it up. And then obviously you, you already had Bliss and Esso and Hilltop Hoods and shit, but they, all, they were already fucking old. Like mm. they were already fucking doing the radio and shit. So they, they're not, they weren't focusing on their market in Australia because no one fucking cared. Mm. You know what I mean? But then Cursor come along and every cunt loves rap now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's my opinion anyway. So that's why I, I, I would love to fucking work with Cursor. I agree 100%. It'd, it'd, yeah. be, it'd be great. I mean, Cursor and Forte together is another combo. You were talking about Forte yeah. before, but I didn't really like Cursor back in the day. I mm. thought, like I said, back in the day, I was against Aussie rap. It's gross, mm. whatever. They sound like bogans. Meanwhile, we all sound like that. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? That's like, how we sound. But, bro. you know, you want to you rap American, like you were saying before. Mm. That's a natural, you know, instinct. Yeah. But I only started listening to him recently, man. And yeah, he goes all right. Like, don't get me mm. wrong. Like, there are other Aussie rappers I like better, but yeah. I'm not against him, you know, yeah, like yeah. I once was, but. That's the thing with Just me Just in case too. he was losing sleep over that. <laughs> 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 oh, he likes me now. Joey likes me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I used to fucking um, be very against like things. It, it, it's a bad way to be like hearing things. Not every piece of music has to be some mind-breaking, intelligent, deep thing, yeah. you know? And people yeah. rock different styles, bro. And like that, that like Forte and stuff. I've only heard a, a couple of Forte songs. And the... 
the flow and the things he's saying, it's all very simple. It's very, yeah, yeah, yeah. But very it, it's simple. just a vibe. It's just very a vibe. Like, so Forte is the Australian fucking uh, Migos. Yeah, you know, yeah, he kind of is. Okay, yeah. put a drink in my cup. Hey, <laughs> put a thing over there. Yeah, I go to the strip club. Hey, like, you, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's Forte. It. Yeah, that's Forte, bro. But he done it in yeah. an Australian fucking style. And every cunt loves Forte. Yeah. Yeah. Ev- not one person. It works, man. Bro, you know what I mean? Like, bad mouths Forte because he's an old, he's like a Don. Same thing. He did the American thing, the very simple lyrics but with the hard beats and then the video clips of him at the strip club and shit throwing money <laughs> that's what americans do but he's done it in an australian way bro and it's fucking it's not bad bro it's good no. like you know what i mean he like, rocks it bro he rocks it hard like he's 40 years old he's still rocking his tns he's fucking nordic like it's it's a st- it's like a lifestyle bro and they they've said that before in interviews and in podcasts and shit it's what they're doing is literally a lifestyle, but they've now finally got some light on what they're doing. So I think I think it's cool. That's the good thing about music, man. It's subjective. It's different. Everyone's different. Doing their own thing. There's something for everyone, bro. Yeah. And there's songs that you're obsessed with that no one has a clue exists. Like, mm-hmm. do we know that uh, in other countries, people are bumping, you know, Aussie rap? Like, do you, do you think in America, I know you get notifications, you Spotify around the world, people listening. Mm. I can't imagine. It's hard for me to imagine someone in America bumping to Forte or even bumping, <laughs> yeah, yeah. even though I'm the I, same. You know, even though I love your guys' music, I can't see like would they bump? You know, would they would they find it as entertaining and stuff? I don't know. Like that, I agree. Yeah. I, I find it hard. Like on my Spotify, I saw that I had once like. 26 German listeners yeah. bumping one of, and, uh, and it's like, can you imagine a bunch of German? It's not e- not even their language. You know what I mean? Well, like, how do, you, how do they understand? How do you say fuck yeah in German? Yeah, fuck knows. <laughs> I've got a lot of listeners from France. So shout out like the French motherfuckers, bro, which is weird as fuck. So on my, oui, oui. yeah, on my Friendly Fire Spotify, it literally got a list and it's got like 30 something listeners, but like almost half is from France. It's fucking weird as fuck. I got, you know? I had um a lot of, I had about a hundred and something Americans. On, uh, I don't know if it's that much now still or if it's gone down a that, bit. That but must be humbling as more so than your fellow Aussie bumping to it, I reckon. Like, I think if a few Aussies, if I could rap, right, and some and a, a group of Aussies was like, oh, my God, your, your, your shit sounds so good. But then if a group of, like, Yankees came up to me or, yeah. like, Germans, it's a and it was like, feeling. you know, it, it'd be way more humbling. I don't know why because you're, sh- you're, you're literally touching people from a – Across oh, the globe, across the man. ocean, yeah. It's just, yeah it's that's that's the good thing about everyone shits on our internet, like this and that technology. It's fucked. It's seriously the best thing that could be happening. But like anything, bro, there's going to be pros and cons, and anything depends how you use it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you, everyone drives a car. You could fucking run someone over. <laughs> it depends <laughs> what the fuck you do with that. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. it's crazy that you're touching people that are not just in Oz. So mm. that's why how I know you guys are gonna do something with this like you yeah. have to i don't yeah. think you none of you will be able to sleep right if you didn't you oh know? yeah hundred <laughs> fucking oath like yeah fucking oath. well if i got to this point and i still hadn't touched a few people from across like across the globe i'd be like all right fuck what am i doing wrong like, there's yeah. obviously something not right here but i know i know we're definitely going in the right direction man it's it's just yeah because on that if you go onto your spotify for artists it gives you a full list of all the countries and it says how many yeah. listeners and it's always like it'll have a couple at the top like 24 german 80 american and then it'll go down and then it's like one in sierra leone one in yeah. lebanon one in argentina it's like there's one person in that country somewhere <laughs> bumping one of our songs <laughs> it's crazy it's, it's not struggling man. to find reception no. yeah, in some <laughs> places <laughs> yeah. fuck yeah no, nah, it, it it is it is pretty humbling. Um, so maybe these are. Do you want? You've got a question we can. Yeah, answer? We'll, we'll answer just one. We won't do all of them. We'll just do one. I don't think I have much. Anyway. I'll ask another question. And then we'll just we'll have a look because um, you said something before, and I know Ozrap only. Shout out Ozrap only, man. <laughs> he's he's been he's been here since day one. He um he asked. Let me put on my fucking glasses. <clears throat> okay, he said. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Australian rap scene as a whole and do you like Husky? So I think that's a good question for you to answer because I want to know your thoughts. I love Husky. Yeah, Husky. Body, like, yeah. Body, body the Booth yeah. is one of my all-time faves. He is an OG. Like, yeah. I love him. I used to think when I first seen him, I judged him on face value, mm-hmm. seen his shit as a feature with chilling it. Then I listened to his normal shit and him in the booth just uh, freestyling, whatever. And he 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 ticks my boxes, man. Like yeah, legit, he's good. I, he he's I love him on a feature, 
but I also like his music. But most of his music I find is a feature. Do you know what I mean? Or yeah. maybe I'm wrong, but I've heard him yeah. mostly on featuring. But yeah. I like it. I, he ticks my box, Barrett Husky, 100%. So what about the what was it, the Australian music scene yeah. as a whole? Oh, Australian music as a whole, yeah, it's mm. obviously thriving at this point. I don't mm. know whether it's because I'm all of a sudden uh, aware of it, mm. but as of like the last three years, UK Aussie like mm -hmm. uh, one four like all this all this stuff is blowing up. Like I don't know how much money they got in the bank now one four, but they they oh, they, yeah. they featured with ASAP Ferg. They had ASAP yeah. Ferg as a feature, so <laughs> it's never been better. And because I feel like we're at the time, the point in time where. We live in such an open-minded community now compared to back in the day. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's only going up from here. So I wouldn't be surprised if we, you know, go leaps and bounds above other countries. You know, maybe not America because America's been doing it for a hot minute. But, you know, it's, yeah, definitely the best it's ever been. Yeah, fucking know. It's definitely yeah. booming in the last couple of years, man, with this newer generation. It's where... Because the internet, man, really, there's more people doing it. There's a lot more different styles and it's just more diverse than ever. So there's something for everyone. You can relate more as well. Like when they talk about, you know, living out West and stuff. Mm. You live out West, so you feel like you, I'm a part <laughs> of that life. I'm singing shanks and shivs, rapping about like I got a yeah, like like yeah, shank at home. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And then I go to bed at 9.30, wake up for work. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, fucking oath. Yeah, that's like I said, man, the West, bro, I reckon we do the music thing all right, man. I really do. Yeah, it, it's definitely getting better, that's for sure. And I think it's only going to continue to get better. Um, yeah, it's just changing with the times, man. New people coming in, new songs, new ideas. You know, it's fucking more rich than it's ever been. And it's as long as, you, as, long as you're good, like you have to be self-humbling as well. You've got to mm -hmm. know, you got to know that you have boys with you that can pull you aside and tell you if, hey man, like maybe not you're not that good, but like, <laughs> no, but like you got to be like, if you have a lane, you got to stay in that lane. If you don't do it, maybe it's a bad advice to some people that can go uh, very diverse. But I feel like you have to be, yeah, basically just self humbling. Know what your what Ooh, your yeah. shtick is, mm -hmm. and if it's not other things, then yeah, maybe stay in your lane. But if it's not, then by all means, do whatever mm. the fuck. But you got to, you know, have obviously some type of self belief, but also be self humbling enough to know like what you're the, good at. Yeah, what your hundred. Because yeah, some people it. might, who knows, there might be rappers out there that are legit delusional like they think they're top they're shit top and they're shit. not yeah. and even in that slack but you know you gotta know like there's a lot of them bro yeah, <laughs> I know. I was, i'm not gonna say any names but i do know a few of them mm. and they're out west and mm. i'm like keep doing you bro like it, uh, but to be honest hats off to them for actually because they put out because they're legit they put out music videos even mm. if you have the balls to even do that bro like mm. you're at least passionate enough about it so that's enough to be like well done, bro. You're that's that a spark, you know, you know what I mean? Because most people, like you said, aren't doing anything with it. Like, yeah. That's why I look at you guys and it's like, hats off to you guys for doing what you do, but you're good at it. So, But there's some guys out there that just aren't, unfortunately. Fucking but normalise telling your friends they can't rap. <laughs> Fucking do it, right? If they can't, like... I mean, there's yeah. a lot of people who just don't have it, man, and they ruin it for the people who do have it. And that's yeah, why I think back in the day, a lot of people were shut off to Aussie rap yes. because of how many bad people were doing it. Yeah, but in saying that too, though, you can also not have it and then teach yourself to... Like, so when I first started making yeah, of course. music, I was fucking garbage at it. You know what I mean? Of course. But I did it so fucking... Like, I was so obsessed with it to the point where I was like, I'm doing this until I fucking am the best at it. But that's and a, I fucking literally you, taught myself from nothing. So you can do it. I but mean, you, you can practice before you start releasing shit too, though. Like, yeah, you know, you don't yeah, have to release I, I didn't mean first. for that message to come across as like... No, nah, no, nah, I agree. Like, but you know what I mean? You know what I mean. I didn't yeah, mean yeah, it yeah, to yeah, be yeah, like, nah, stop nah, doing nah. what you're doing. But No, nah, but if, if, if you're determined enough to do it, you know, it's like even, let's just say example, you, you're trying to rap and then you get, you get pulled aside by a few of your mates and they go, look, man, like, no offense, like you're doing okay, but like, I think maybe this is not for you. You could then use that as fuel to get good, to get better, to go, okay, now I'm going to prove to these guys. Because like I said, man, I quote this all the time, bro. Will Smith even said, bro, like, when you're trying to chase your dreams or follow a goal, it can be fucking scary. And the very first people you need to impress are your friends mm -hmm. because you need to prove to your friends you've got something or you've got a spark. And then that's when they're gonna start, your mates are going to start going, oh, okay, holy fuck. This, this cunt can actually... Then they're going to start listening and to your Spotify, for sharing your SoundCloud thing, sharing your fucking... You know what I mean? So you got to prove to the people you know first and then you can show the world what you got. Which is what you have done. And it's exactly what <laughs> we have done. You have yeah. such a tight-knit, like, 
and not not small social group by any means. Like you got to have a pretty it's big, a big a lot of but friends. also <laughs> tight as. Like you yeah. have the the most like loyal, like tight group that that I've come across in a long time. You know what I mean? Yes. And, and, you know, and it's a different type of. You've been, you know, you, how long you've always all known each other? Like it's average, in primary like, school. Primary school, yeah. So, and that's the weird thing is because we're the weird ones because if you think of most people, most people don't stick with their first friend group, but we're the only weird no, cunts no. who we've just gone. Yeah. We, it's like my missus like showed me a meme. It's like boys. Um, and it was exactly, it's exactly bro, us, like me, us and the boys. Like it was, the, the meme was boys meet a few dudes and then they just can't be bothered socializing with other people. So they just <laughs> stay friends for life. Like ages. <laughs> but because especially in Western Sydney, you always see people go from group to group and then one weekend these guys hanging out with that guy, but then two weeks later they get into a punch on and then, you know what I mean? It's kind of sort of always splitting up. But And while I'm seeing all that happen, me and my group just up the middle stayed together. We're like, fuck these cunts. And this is right it out, bro. And we're now almost all fucking pushing 26 years old. And it's yeah. the same motherfuckers that I was hanging out with when I was literally in year four. And that that's helps it. too. If, if yeah. you're... So, it, no, you go ahead. Oh, so, uh, I was just going to say, man, that's that's uh, a lot of people envy that, bro. Like myself, mm. like I've never had a a close group. But now I obviously do, but I'm talking yeah. from when I was younger. It'd be mad yeah. to say, hey, we've been boys since like fourth mm. grade. You know what I mean? But mm. uh, it's it does help. And you trust those boys more than someone you've only known for a short amount of time. So therefore you can trust their feedback with whatever you're doing, music yeah. or just in life in general, man. Yeah, yeah. What were you saying, DZ? I, I was just going to say, if you're trying to do anything creatively, I've said it before, it always helps to have a strong group behind you. So like yeah. Moby was saying, man, if we wanted, we could organise our own show, man. Yeah. We just ran out of place and we just have enough people that can perform and it's just like a big party. And, you know, if they believe in what you're doing and they know you have some talent and they're behind you, you're always going to be better off. Well, always. Here's, here's a perfect example for, you know, uh, uh, people also know too that me and Joey, we're all, we're mates. Like we've been, we haven't, we've been mates for like what, a couple of years oh, now? Sorry, I'll interject. Just before I got told, um, <clears throat> so my beautiful girlfriend, Tori, apparently mm. she reckons she's the only reason I know you guys. So she <laughs> says, she goes, she realized, she goes, seriously, if you fuck me over, you'll lose all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted me. Oh, she wouldn't rest easy if I brought her up. <laughs> Love you, baby. But yeah, had to. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no. I, know, I know. Obviously, you boys too. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Nah, nah. <laughs> which is well before I get before I get to my next point, which um is something to do with what DZ said. Um, yeah. So we've been friends what for a, a few years now, maybe maybe two, two almost years, creeping up right? two. But um, which is weird. I was thinking before you come here, right? Is because we're all from this St. Clair Erskine Park area, right? And I know most of the Erskine Park people. I know the, all of them, right? But I never met you prior. That's because I That's went to Dom's lab. So I went to St. Dom's in Pemmerif. So my, all That's my mates. Weird thing, yeah, hey. yeah, yeah, yeah. Never I, met prior. So, so you all went to heap, heaps of house parties here in yeah. St. Clair, yeah. running your muck and all that. I would do that, but in Penrith. Oh, and then, and some, okay, and that, some, okay. So I would travel out. And then, yeah, I'd tag along to a lot of parties in St. Clair, but like not um, nowhere near none of my like boys yeah. in Pembroke, you know okay, what I mean? So yeah, that's that why. Sense. If I went to St. Clair High, things would have been different. Okay, we probably yeah. would have known each other then, obviously. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the, okay, that makes sense. That's what I was thinking for ages. I'm going away. How the fuck did I not meet Joey if I was going to almost every single Erskine Park St. Clair party? Because yeah. St. Clair, I swear a lot of people weird. know it's a bubble man. Like yeah, yeah, if yeah, you yeah. know one person, you're like, you eventually know someone who knows someone. You know everyone. Like, oh, you know everyone. You know everyone. Even if you don't like someone or someone don't like you, you fucking know them. It's yeah. just how it is between yeah. St. Clair. Like, I mean, what? St. Clair, Oscar, we share the fucking same postcode for fuck's sake. <laughs> Two <laughs> suburbs in the same postcode. Like, that's yeah. fucking weird as fuck. <laughs> yeah. like, you know what I mean? But um, so back to what DZ was saying, we could easily do our own, you know, TJM show, whatever. Well, for example, tomorrow night, the party we're all going to, Shout out Mike, Mr. Meagly. It's his fucking birthday. I think he's turning like 36 or something. I don't even know, but he's old as <laughs> fuck. Anyway. Benjamin, <laughs> Benjamin Button, bro. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, he has literally got us and the TJM boys. We're all doing a set, like a festival tomorrow. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, so we're all de- He's yeah. got set times and shit. I'm pretty sure he said he wanted to print out little flyers and paste them around. Right, so tomorrow night. So the party Perfect. starts at three. So we'll get there from three. And then first set <laughs> is, I think, five o'clock, which is Adzi. Then from five o'clock to five, so then 5.45, um, Jake Mobs, Moby's doing a uh, disco funk set. 
and then from he goes for 45 minutes and then Diamond and uh, Trip Bradley, Brad Adart, are doing a one hour drum and bass set. Then Mikey's doing a one hour dubstep set. Then I come in and I'm doing a dubstep slash dance set. Then after me, it's one of Mikey's mates from um, that his missus knows. He's doing a set. And then Dunkley is playing death step at the end of <laughs> like half an hour. Yeah. That's fucking yeah. awesome. So basically yeah. what he's trying to say is it's all free for us, but anyone who wants to pay, yeah, how can, much entry oh, will put no, ticket? Fucking uh, $15. Like. I was thinking 55. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. So just that alone, we, we, we could do your own shit. We could like, so tomorrow yeah, night. Definitely. And tomorrow night, I'm going to act like I'm DJing a festival, bro. I'm going to be fucking up there <laughs> going fucking burger. Like I'm going nuts tomorrow. But so it's exactly like these, like you said, Dylan, we could, set up our own thing and hey if people don't come who gives a fuck like we, we could we, still we do have it. a big between yeah. the both of us man because i got like obviously i'm younger so i got a completely different social circle but still pretty big as well <laughs> it's like so between all our friends man we could easily feel like sell oh, yeah. tickets bro and it's like the merch man we sell out of the merch it's just all you guys bro. it's just all the mates bro <laughs> yeah, like, man. it's something but and uh, like it's it builds from there like surely yeah, it builds yeah, yeah. from there oh, like, i've already I, I've, I know i fucking let people know that don't know you guys about your shit like mm -hmm. i so even some of them, yeah, they probably don't give a fuck, but I, I, yeah. I tell them anyway. And <laughs> yeah, then yeah. some people do and some people yeah. don't. So all, automatically I've got probably gotten you maybe a few more followers. Or, but that's how it works, man. Yeah, like 100%. Said, I think so. you definitely have because yeah. sometimes I see, I'll see someone who's, who's followed me on Instagram or something that I recognize the name and I know that's a friend of someone and they just yeah, randomly yeah, follow yeah. me. I'm like, well, maybe this guy's, you know, <laughs> yeah, showed yeah, 100%. Him. Well, that's why that's why the, you always see memes like on the internet about when people are doing you know are rapping or producing and shit, and then the meme is like, um, you know, it costs zero dollars to support your mate. Like people don't understand how much just sharing, commenting, and liking a post what that does because like I, I've always explained that right. The internet is like the ocean. If I put a po Instagram post of a song on the on Instagram, right, it's like putting a message in a bottle. I throw that bottle in the ocean and that could end up anywhere in the world on any beach, on any rock surface, any cliff edge. That bottle can float to literally anywhere from Sydney Harbour. Okay. It's the same with Instagram. I'll put it up. Yeah. It's on my page, but any motherfucker from around the world can see that. Right. On the explore page, man. <laughs> you need, so when people share and like it and stuff like that, Instagram puts it, the algorithm, it says Instagram literally reads it like an AI and goes, okay, this post is doing well. Let's boost it up a little bit. More people Let's see it. Let's boost it up a little bit. And then they start to show that post to different areas oh, so. that are similarly uh, interested into that th so, thing, whether it's hip hop or EDM. You know what I mean? So that how, that's, how, that's how it works? Yes, so, 100%. So, so, okay, in comparison to your guys' music to like, you know, like we're saying J. Cole and that, mm -hmm. that this, is not, this isn't putting down your guys' music, but mm -hmm. yeah, there's levels, right? 100%. So- there's more chance of a J. Cole thing popping off in your explore feed yes, than, than your DZ guys, right? 100%. But what do you guys have to do to rock up on random people's explore page? Well, I've been on explore page have, quite a few mm -hmm. times. It, it's just random. It random. depends on okay. your on it's what you're interested, your random. location, yeah. tags, interest. location, how many times people are sharing, sharing, commenting, saving. So, so uh, an example... I like, I follow on Instagram mostly space and cats, bro. <laughs> that is my Instagram feed. Space and, my, and pussy. My, <laughs> my explore page is, is all space shit from like fucking random people. And then I can, yeah. I see, I interact and then I'll get more exactly. of similar things. And because your page is, you're probably always searching up space stuff. Mm -hmm. Instagram knows, okay, this motherfucker loves space. So let's show him this post that this guy did in America about fucking the moon. And it literally pops up on his feed, but that won't pop up on my feed because mm. I don't search space. Yeah. My shit, my yeah. feed is literally all only music and other beat makers. Yeah. So that's why it's a, like example, that's why I'm um, tags on Instagram, right? Yeah, tags I fucking too. hate doing it, right? I hate, <laughs> hate, hate social media marketing, right? But if I don't do it, no one sees the post. Tags work, man. Like hashtag. Hashtag. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Hashtag beat maker. Hashtag uh, fucking funky beat. Like I hate doing that shit. It's lame as fuck. <laughs> but, but it works. I used to do that back in the day. Yeah. And like gay tags. Like yeah. ha hashtag live in life. Yeah, hashtag yeah. live in large. Yeah. Or like some gay like shit. But you have to do it, bro. Okay, that's you the have whole to point do of it. it. That's yeah. the whole point of it. That's why like, it feels... That's why as soon as I'm rich, I can't wait. I'm going to hire some fucking banana to do it for me. Because <laughs> I fucking hate doing it. I literally hate doing it, bro. I just want to make the music and let people hear it. Mm. But because I'm a nobody, I have to then fucking make a post, fucking edit it on the computer, upload it with a hundred hashtags. So then maybe I get lucky and some cunt from America sees it and goes, oh, I fuck with him and I get a follow. We're just foundation building. Unfortunately, yes. we don't have the big enough fan base to not yet. do it. Yeah, exactly. Well, so we, we have to We're putting in the hard yards yeah, now and one day we'll there. get there. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, everyone starts there, but like mm-hmm. exactly. You go back to like I watched old Kendrick shit when he's like spitting in the street of like legit Compton and just all these all these <laughs> bro, just chill. I should probably shouldn't say that. Sorry. <laughs> oh shit. Sorry. <laughs> Oh shit! All these homies. <laughs> oh shit! Wait, I'm, 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 I'm tanned enough. I'm tanned enough to say that, right? We, we, we can edit. We can so edit. We can edit. <laughs> we can edit. Uh, damn man! <laughs> you funny. All cunt. these homies. <laughs> you funny cunt. Oh, I mean, where, where, where are you from? You're. What? what? My dad's Egyptian, so we're 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 like you are, we're yeah. Arab. So I mean, yeah. I don't. Mm. Oh, it's oh, hard, right? Because it's, it. it's hard though. I don't because know, man, I don't want to get canceled. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll okay, listen, just, just edit it anyway. We will fucking yeah. get canceled. I don't know, bro. man. That's funny. Just as fuck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you say it now <laughs> to be accident. like, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're, but, we're Australian, but I mean, he's Egyptian. Yeah, I don't know. We built the pyramids, bro. Come on, give us a break. Anyway, his homies, right? We're around. We're around it and there was nappy hair Kendrick just yeah. back in the day and he started with literally nothing. Like he legit would talk about how he'd just he'd rap <laughs> for like for literally nothing, just for the point of it, right? The, the sake of it. And his 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 mates would just start pumping it. So yeah. He obviously came from some his something. Mates. So his mates. You gotta start it all starts from nothing. But a lot of people don't give it like that consistency, which is a lot of the time it might be, it could be disheartening because you're like, what do you have to go off? Like Mm -hmm. you don't really have anyone else that you can go off, right? To be like, Hey boys, this takes about a good 10 years or something before you get traction like proper. But then how do you know? Like that's the thing. So it does take a lot of self belief because any given day could be feeling shit, feel a certain, certain type of way someday. You want to give up this and that, but then you know you're passionate about it, so that obviously yeah. drives it. So, well, that's why, for like example, for me, right, I go for it, all, and it, it happens to me the most because I'm the producer. So, like I've said this a hundred times, and now people should know that I'm, yeah, Dylan. He he just writes the words, right? Yeah, every now and then he can find the beat he likes, and he'll send me the words in the beat. But I, if he doesn't use a beat he's found, I've then got to make the beat, send it to him, mix, master the beat, get the beat, just the beat by itself ready. Then I've got to do it again and get it ready with his vocals. And it's a full on process for me, bro. Yeah. And I've got to get it ready. It's hard work. And it's hard. And, it, and it, it's so, it can be so mentally, dra- so mentally draining. Like this week, like I said, I could have probably had my EP done this week, but I've had to just have a break, bro. And I've just been playing games like a fat slob for the past three days. <laughs> I've done, no- even my missus, my missus, me and my missus had an argument yesterday because my ass has not left that fucking chair in like the past 72 hours. <laughs> Because I've just been playing games, but I've, and as weird as it sounds, because like, I know like a lot of the time, yeah, I do go for walks with, with the dog and me and my missus take the dog on a bush walk. And that's also a great break for me. But just sometimes being able to just play games and not think about the music is a mad break as well for me mentally. Mm. That's what a lot of people, that's probably, I think my missus doesn't understand yet either because she just sees it as me being addicted to the computer, Yeah. which I am addicted to the fucking computer because <laughs> I'm trying to achieve and pursue a fucking goal. I'm but at to- least you're doing that on the side. If you yeah. were legit doing that, but you had no excuse. Imagine if yeah. you were going from work and be like, this is my therapy. It's like, from what cunt? Yeah, you don't yeah. do nothing. You know what I mean? Right. But you're exactly literally right. trying to do work. something. So it's I work. Need, I need that yeah. mental release because yeah. otherwise my brain, like I said, bro, sometimes I swear to God, I can feel like the electrical pulses in my brain, bro. It's going like boom, 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 boom. Like, because I'm just fucking constantly working and then don't, don't forget your eyes and get sore and shit because you're constantly looking at the lights of the computer. And um, so this week, especially, I just, I just got up. So it was, I think... Uh, the Tuesday or the Wednesday where we first got canned from work and they're like, all right, you've got to stay home. I was like, yep, sweet. I can do the EP. I can finish the song. I even got to the point where I finished one of the songs. I just got to master it. I got to the mastering point and I just sat there and I just went, fuck this. Saved it, turned it off and just started playing <laughs> games for the next three days because I just, and that wasn't even me thinking about it. That was just my body telling you, letting me know, okay, yeah. bro, you need to fucking take a step back now because yeah. you're fucking doing too much right now. Like, because yeah. it, it's so stressing, right? Having, it'd be like, imagine, I don't know, you go to your job, right? And for some reason, your boss is like, oh, look, man, I, I've got to go away for the week. Can you do all the fucking company paperwork for the week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll do it. No worries, because you know what you're doing. But then you take that paperwork home and you realize you're you're prepping for shit that's fucking four days in advance. That yeah, you're not yeah, even yeah. at that job yet. And yeah, you're prepping yeah. it and doing paperwork, whatever reason, whatever job it could be. It's the same thing. So when I was doing the um, Energy Frequency Vibration EP, I've got my EP, so I was getting real stressed because I was working a, little, a couple of hours on a song from his. Then I'd change and then do 
a little bit from mine, then I do a single, then I do a single that he's sent me. And then all of a sudden it gets to like fucking five o'clock and I've done a little bit on like five different projects, but I haven't completed anything. So I, that started stressing me out. And I was like, wait a second, I've got to take a step back. And that's why I focused mainly on his one, got his one done for him because I knew that once I finished one of them, I was going to be in overload mode. And I knew if I finished my one, if I did the selfish thing and did my one first, his one probably wouldn't have been released yet <laughs> because I then would be in this situation. But instead of my EP waiting to be finished, it would have been DZ. Let me so, ask you this though. You you compared it to my occupation, right? Which mm-hmm. standard occupation, you got a boss. You don't have bosses, right? Mm-hmm. So are you just trying to meet your own deadline? Because like you said, it's all about the how often you put out music because what if you were just swamped with work, mm-hmm. DZ had his EP, you have yours. Mm-hmm. What was stopping you from going, you know what, I'll, I'll prioritize DZs mm-hmm. and then I'll get to mine later uh, mm-hmm. as opposed to just swamping yourself even more, even mm-hmm. though you get it out on time, well done, hats off. Mm-hmm. Is that to practice being punctual with your music or is that just, uh, you know, or is it OCD thing where I need to get it done by today because you could easily just wait, like, delay it a week or something do you know what yeah. i mean or i get what you're saying yeah yeah no i feel that look that's, that's a good point but it's also practicing um so getting into good habits now about the whole consistency thing because yeah. i know like i said so minimum so minimum you want to have one song a month out which i've i'm not doing but he is which is great because i know if he blows up, I blow up. Yeah, if, I, together, bro. if I blow up, he blows up. So that's Moby why. Moby blows up. Yeah. He, Trip not, Bradley like blows up. We're a team. <laughs> so because we're a team, I don't mind sitting a bit back in the shadows and letting my work lag a bit because I know when if I'm working on shit, he then knows, okay, for this in particular song, I'm going to pay another guy 20 bucks to produce it for me because well, it gives me a bit of release oh. so I can continue working. On that point so, too, it's for me what you're saying is kind of more of a personal thing. I like I I just I'm very go, I'm very impatient. I got to do shit, and then sometimes when I don't have anything like right now, mm-hmm. I can kind of relax and breathe easy because I've already done features or this that I know was yeah. coming down the line. So like I got songs on his EP that I know is coming. So yeah. even if I don't drop anything, I still got something coming yeah. soon. You know, or yeah. like a collab or like with the by Stephen, we got a song. I know that's coming, so I can kind of you know. You can Not, relax a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I don't have to constantly be working on something. Mm. But it, it, it is hard because it's like, like I said, because I'm, I'm already not doing the one song a month thing, but not just that too. With Instagram, the, the idea is you want, you need to release, you need to post something on Instagram minimum Daily. once a day. <laughs> Daily. Like, and like I said, I fucking hate it. Mm. It might not look like it on my post because I'm always doing emojis and smiley <laughs> faces and shit, but I'm telling you right now, mm. bro, I'm not going to lie to the people. That's just bullshit marketing. I'm just marketing, bro, because like I don't want to fucking do it, bro. I'd like I said, I'd rather just do the music and do the work, upload it to Spotify, and then start the next project and go, okay, hectic. But like I said, I'm not established enough to do that. I need to, so that's why with every song I make, I've then got to dedicate an hour of marketing just so I can get that one fucking listener on Spotify. And like it I said, bro, it's working, bro. So. It's working slowly, it takes work. but it takes time. Mm, like takes I said. Work. So the first thing I'm going to do when I'm rich, bro, is I'm hiring some fucking cunt to do it, to do the Instagram. I'm literally going to give them my accounts and go, here, bro, here's a fucking thousand bucks a week. Upload shit. I don't mind. It, I don't give know? a fuck what it is. I, don't, I like, do I it like posting. Because it's it's just too much, bro. Because like I said, I already get stressed enough as it is just making the music. And then to top it off, I've got to fucking upload shit to Instagram, mm. upload shit to YouTube. You know what I mean? It's good to hear you fucking, it's fun. You know, I've heard you a few times like when I'm rich, when I'm rich, it's good to have that mentality, bro. Cause you, you That's seem so happen. sure of yourself. bro. Oh, and, man. And, and, That's how it works. Know, <laughs> no, but legit. And literally, uh, you know, some, a lot of people, including myself or a lot of people struggle to be like, you know, it, am I just going to be that, you know, typical standard, you know, day to day working life and, but you got to try and make something of yourself. But yeah, yeah you seem pretty sure, man. But by man. your work, I know, Ooh. you know what I mean? If I hadn't heard your music and, you know, oh, he lives out west, but I haven't heard his music, <laughs> maybe he's not going to, but I've heard your music, mm-hmm. so I believe it. But it's it's humbling yeah. to see that you, yeah. you're, you believe in yourself to, to a T. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't be constantly saying, when I'm rich, when I'm rich, when I'm, you know yeah. what I mean? Like That's why every rapper, everyone you like says it, because the law of attraction, that stuff works. you got to believe it with all, you got to have, you got to back yourself and you will get there, man. Eventually you'll get there. It's interesting you say that, Joey, because the first 
step, right, to anything is the self-belief thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what it is. Like, it could even just be, like, so, so what do you do for work? You're a Sparky? Sparky, yeah. It could be the same thing. You could you could just want to be the fucking best Sparky Have in, your own in business. Sydney. You could be, you just want to be the best, but you got to start with, no, nah, I know. So, you can ask any one of my friends, right, and they're all going to tell you the same thing. From fucking high school, bro. I've been before I was even doing music. I've been saying, "Man, I'm gonna be rich," <laughs> and people would look at me like, "Man, what? Like, <laughs> like this kind's crazy. How are you gonna be rich, bro? You're like a fucking, you know, your drop kick. You don't really do anything. You don't really do good at school. What? How, how are you possibly gonna be rich? And you know, now five years later, I'm making money off my music. I'm not rich by any fucking means, but yeah, we get paid to make these fucking podcasts, and this is just fun for us. Mm. We're getting paid for uh. this shit." The music I upload to YouTube, right? Once again, this is fun. There's a bit of marketing that I have to do. I get fucking paid for that shit. Yeah, a couple cents. But I'm getting fucking paid, bro. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the so, day. Paid is paid. Yeah, no exactly. It is, it's bro. fun, especially if it's fun. The beats I make, right? I'm getting fucking paid. Like a couple, like I was, I was saying this to my missus, right? So a couple nights ago, not couple, maybe last week, I was just mate on my computer making music. I get a notification on my phone. Check it. You've been paid fucking... 55 whatever into your account i'm like what the fuck is this like am i getting refunded for something whatever uh, and then i get an email notification on my computer bling so and so has been paid into your paypal i'm like oh, okay cool check it it's a beat i sold a beat i'm getting paid to fucking make music you know what i mean beats are good so bro. <laughs> i'm getting and it's like young sp once told me he said man the second you get paid for what you do you're a professional fucking oh you, you, you are a professional now yeah. you're selling your services for money for real money you know what I mean? So yeah, nowhere near rich, but that's how it, it's a fit. Like I said, it's a foundation. Yeah, I've sold you know one or two beats for fucking you know fifty bucks. But what's gonna happen when I start selling five beats a day for fifty bucks? That's and, a wage. And you do that seven days a week, bro. I could quit my job within the next year or two, and I could literally sit at that fucking chair. And then my missus won't be saying, "Oh, get off the chair, get off." Nah, nah, because I'll, that's my job now. It's work. She'll be like, "Sit your ass down, <laughs> yeah. boy." Yeah. She'll, like the, she'll be so, going stay in the chair. But, so, but is there always uh, is there a high market for beats? So could oh, you yeah, rely? Bro. There is. Bro, oh yeah. Don't understand. But then would oh, you? Yeah. But would you get attached to some beats and be like, "Nah, I'm keeping that one for myself." Well, no, that's the that's the issue. The biggest. That's why I'm doing something really, really cheeky, and it's probably costing me a little bit of money, but I don't give a fuck. I'm not selling exclusive licenses for a lot of the beats. Least. And that's because I know that whatever beat I make, this cunt is going to kick could kill the beat. <laughs> so what I do majority of the time is if I make a fat ass beat and I, and I love it and I go, fuck, I can hear Dylan. I can hear Izzy. I can hear Moby or Blunk Boy or whoever. I think I could use it, right? I don't put the exclusive license for sale. Now the exclusive license, right? When someone buys an exclusive license off you, that means they're the only person in the world who has the rights to that beat. So once I sell the exclusive license to that rapper, I cannot legally cannot let DZ rap on that beat because then I can get fucked. Even though you made it. Even though I made it. Okay. I then That beat is not mine no more. It's selling the license. And that's why the exclusive licenses are so much more can sell from anywhere between $300 to five thousand dollars so why wouldn't you you could easily do that for every now and then if you make a beat you're yeah. not in love with license exactly cool. so the beats that i know i'm like eh, i don't really even want to give it to i don't even want dylan to try it he might want to try it but i don't really i feel like he can't do much of it or it's not going to be a banger i'll put the exclusive license for sale and i still myself even do exclusive licenses for only a hundred bucks you go on my beat page right and you've got and the, the same website, BeatStars. People are selling exclusives like minimum like two ninety nine. Yeah, they're expensive. And I only do it for ninety nine bucks because like, once again, I'm building that foundation. I'm a nobody. Who the fuck's gonna buy a beat off some random producer from Western Sydney for fucking three hundred bucks? No cunt is. But leases, how but, much? How much do you sell your leases for? So I sell thirty. Yeah, I only sell. I sell MP threes by themselves for like I don't know twelve or thirteen dollars. I then sell the MP3, the Wave, and the the non-exclusive license, which means that they have semi rights to the beat. They can make money off the beat if they want, but I'm legally allowed to sell it to someone else. Let Dylan rap on it. Let Moby rap on it. Yeah, at least you know I only, the leases. I only sell them for thirty dollars as well. You know that uh, so, um, the chilling it song, Freedom. 
Yeah, freedom. freedom. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a lease. That's so a lease. Th- there was yeah. other songs from the US and people that heard it and were like, beat. did Chillin' It still the beat? But it's just a lease. It's so, a lease. you know, someone yeah. else oh, can make so a song. That's why yeah. Yeah. some people, like, for example, I wonder when, this is random, but Tory Lanez, he did Jerry Sprunger. So T-Pain did, like, I'm Sprung, mm. but he used his whole beat, mm. even the tone of the song. But would that have been really? a lease? Because that would have been or, a lease. Or they had then. an agreement, yeah. Because mm-hmm. they would have had an agreement lease. Yeah. Okay, that's how. Because every time I hear a song that's remade, which a lot are nowadays, a yes. lot of songs, yeah. radio songs especially. So that's all it would be then, lease. Yes. Well, okay. it, it also depends. I'm pretty sure you can just talk and negotiate. Whoever has the rights, you can talk after the fact. Mm-hmm. So if like that T Pain song was probably pretty much older than the Tory Lanez one, right? Oh, heaps older. Yeah, yeah so yeah. Tory Lanez probably was just like, can I, can I do a remix yeah, of this? Yeah, well, they seem something. pretty tight. Like, in yeah. There, so that I f- mm. yeah, I feel like he would have just had an agreement or some shit. All my songs are leases. So yeah. you can go on Beat Stars right now, all of the same, that song, you can get that beat and make a song on You can, the same with 360. Uh, well, except when Friendly Fire has No, not, not his, not, some of mm. his beats, are, they're not all leases, right? Most uh, of them are, ex- no, 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 just no, be no, mine, no, yeah. no, the only beat, that you've used of mine that's for sale is Airy. The Fiends. And Airy. Yeah. And Airy, speaking of Airy, that's the Airy. one that I, that's one of the ones I sold for like Airy fucking five bucks. Cold. Yeah. Yeah. Airy is cold. Yeah. Airy is cold. That's the thing too, bro. That's a song that I didn't really I, I oh, didn't I didn't think it was This guy didn't like Airy. Yeah, he, he, I'm pretty sure at one point he wanted me to scrap it. But you love it. Ready? It was like yeah. I'm not I'm gonna fuck it up, right? <laughs> but it was something like I put him in, you use the word hearses, like my, my verses, put him in hearses. And the verses, and the, and the verses, oh, verses, you know, verses. It sounds like yeah. shit right now. But yeah. <laughs> me, me, and Tor, me and Tori, because yeah. I remember we went to- You didn't to, like it. Well, I that was one of the songs I will admit I listened to the second time and loved it because there was other songs that I liked better. Yeah. But your uh, Spirit and Jackal, like both your uh, albums, we were, me and Tori were in Byron- at the time, so that was the our track of Byron. A eh? we were driving through the streets of like just like Byron and stuff, and like mad scenic route down to this cabin that we stayed in the woods at, and we're listening to uh, Airy, and then listening to like um, what it means, mm. and uh, oh, what was that one that you you done Iggy as well? Burning out, probably burning ding, out. Ding, yeah, ding, yeah. Ding, ding, I would pretend yeah. to be on the guitar. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like See, uh, it's weird because more than one song on this cunt's EP for that he didn't like. Mafia, remember you were tossing up. In the, in the I, mafia. Almost, I almost. Call, the only reason what did ma- you call that one the bad and ugly. No, it's or it's, it's mafia. Maf- I left it as mafia. Is it called mafia? But the, you the, were the, tossing up with that. The only Airy. reason it's on there is because we wanted to have the same number of songs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I yeah, was yeah. this close to scrapping mafia. Yeah. I don't like that song at all. But the beat on that is fucking hard. I love the beat on that. I loved it. I even sent that beat to Bl- Blunk Boy. Was gonna make a song with that beat, but he just never. I said he he asked me for the beat and everything. He just never got back to mm. me. But he originally, he, I sent that to him first. Then I sent it to you for the EP. So it's just weird. You, you know what I mean? It's two different uh, creative That's, minds that sometimes, like like I said, like my song Floodlights, man, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I could delete that right now and I would not give a fuck. Yeah, but sometimes because you boys know you're a bit more intricate with your understanding of music than me or other listeners, just because you guys don't like it doesn't mean, like you said there before, yes. if you don't like it, someone else will. I love, I loved Airy. Yeah, exactly fair enough. Right. It wasn't my favorite song of yours, but, but that's, you still liked it. That's a high bar to set. If to say that's your f- f- my favorite song, but yeah. Airy still killed it. Like I remember looking over at Tori. I was, I was driving. I looked at her like my face scrunched up like a fat <laughs> bitch. I was like, what is this guy saying right now? Like. Hands up, hands up, what's up? Uh, hands, hands up, up hands, hands up. up. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's a good song when we're doing live shows. Yeah, hands well, up, hands up. Well, that's up. probably yeah. one of the main reasons we kept it because we we're both, when, yeah. we, when me and him were doing the final EP list and we we're in our grandma's house waiting for like Sunday lunch <laughs> and we had this little speaker <laughs> and we we're listening to Airy and I'm thinking we're just both going, yeah, no, nah, this would be a good on stage song. That's about it. That, that, yeah. that one would be one of the turn up songs. Yeah, that's a turn up song. You just keep mm. it, you know, fuck everyone just fucking starts doing heaps of shots and shit. You just, just one of those songs. But, um, yeah, it's 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 always gonna be like that, I guess. So um, you wouldn't perform DZ tomorrow if you rock up? <laughs> Probably not. This party. <laughs> well, fucking everyone keeps busting my balls. They want me and you to do fucking sold our souls live, and I'm like, shut <laughs> up. Oh, hey. like, everyone wants me, so I've put it on my playlist just in case. If I do drop it I, and you're there, I do want you to come on stage. But everyone keeps saying, Mikey keeps got. Mikey said to me, he goes, bro. Me and, Mo- me and Mobsy were talking, me and Moby were talking. If you don't drop Sold Our Souls, I'm going to drop it. And if I don't drop it, Mobsy's going to drop it. <laughs> I'm like, shut up, man. Just let it, like, just fuck, I'll think about it. But 
It, I mean, it's, just hard, it, it's man. a good, like, it's a good feeling that like you it know, is a good people feeling, want to want to yeah. see it, but you know, we're still, you know. How would you go live? Have you been running on the treadmill and spitting at the same time, Daisy? Yeah. To make sure oh. that you can. <laughs> The breath control, I got that. Yeah, I could be jumping around and still yeah, rapper. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could do that's, that. That's where it matters because have you been to a concert before where, you know, Travis Scott, he's a performer. So when he sounds he's like going, shit live, yeah, I don't care about that because he's a he's fucking- going crazy. Yeah. He's going but there's crazy. some people, bro. I remember watching this Coachella set on TV. Obviously, I wasn't there, but they had Sean Paul there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come and give it to Come yeah, and give it to yeah, yeah. And he was huffing and puffing yeah. out of shape, out of belly. <laughs> and he, been a like, fat and I and thought shit. to myself, how much money is he getting paid to he- for me to hear him heavy breathe? Mm-hmm. Like he's, you know what I mean? Like, but come it, and give it to oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. Legit. Oh, the the temperature, the temperature <laughs> in the room is getting hot. Oh, oh got the temperature. <laughs> <laughs> Someone get me a towel. Wait, but, but him, oh. how he must be sitting on millions. Oh yeah. Bro. yeah. Oh yeah. Because he's established. He's allowed to be a fat prick and jump around and fucking be. Yeah. Hey, at the end of the day, he's because, still Sean Paul. Like yeah. that's the thing. Because it doesn't matter yeah. what he is now. He put the work in when yeah. we were all. And guppies, that's the, that's you know the end I mean? goal, I guess. Because yeah doesn't matter like obviously if you can do it if you're that passionate about it you want to do it when you're older then that's you know mm-hmm. respect to you but sometimes if, if you need to do the bare minimum bro and that gets you millions who's to say if i shit on john ball he would laugh at me right now living in st Clair, being like <laughs> yeah, bro, yeah are you you're a sparky you said yeah. oh okay sweet <laughs> like, you mean he's, he would never hear this in no, a million years no you know never I mean? no but i'm saying but, you know what i mean like it's it's funny that we shit on we've shit yeah. on people that you know have no, made it like yeah i'm just comparing that. him to people that i'm currently yeah. into mm. and it was just funny watching him on this coachella set so no, that would have been funny that, as fuck. that breath control that shit, it's real as like as to, to be a good live performer and also obviously if you're good you're gonna sound good through spotify and shit if you're good but to sound good on a live show, bro. It's a different thing, different ball. I, I, I went to Rapture. I don't know if you guys went to mm. Rapture years ago. Uh, which, this was Kendrick was about oh, to Eminem blow Eminem and shit was there, yeah. Eminem, bro. Eminem did Rap God. And I had it on my Instagram. I put it up on Instagram. Yeah. He did not miss a syllable. Yeah. And yeah, it was yeah. like, do you know how sometimes you're like, oh, was that mimed? Or was that, did he? Did he but nah, he was he like, was meta, 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 meta. I was like, yeah, what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, Tech, Tech Nine, man, those chopper rappers, bro. You see Tech Nine's live shows, you know, big lungs, big lungs. man. And I, I do a lot of people do like um, so you can do cut-ins like when you're recording. So if you're doing a very fast verse and you need to take a breath, you can yeah. cut. I never that do that. Sense. Oh wow! <laughs> I do, can, do you think a lot of artists don't as well? Like, or do you like? I wonder what the I wonder what the percentage is. It, it depends what you're trying to do figures. too. Because I'm pretty sure. He was a massive artist that was saying he's most of his shits all one takes. Oh, fuck, who Probably was Probably a lot of them. Lil Wayne used to say he didn't even write his shit, but I don't know how much that fucking... Well, that's what they say about Jay-Z too. Apparently Jay-Z just fucking freestyled. Was it Drake? I think... I could be wrong, but I swear I think... Someone huge, like Drake status, they were saying in an interview that um they do the whole... um Like they, they, they mumble... A rhythm yeah drake does it then they go back and fill the words in and then once he's got the whole thing done he spits the whole thing in just one go and then that's it yeah i think that was drake. i remember hearing a similar thing yeah it. so it could be drake it could be drake talk about efficiency imagine how much so- how many songs you could pump out like yeah that's why i guess when he does albums he does enough for two albums like when he yeah. does songs lately anyway he's been releasing like in the high teens minimum of yeah. songs yeah which yeah. sometimes i can think is oversaturated mm. sometimes I don't want to sit in here for 17 songs or something. Or yeah. maybe, maybe sometimes it's good, but I reckon a lot of the time, sometimes it is quality over quantity, but who knows? There is yeah. a lot of filler in these big albums, man. Every, yeah. uh, like most artists, man, there's, it's so rare to find an album where it's hit after hit after hit. Yeah, no, after no, no, hit. no, no. There's no. always skips. In I can promise you guys right now that no matter how big the artist is, even Eminem to himself, if they've got an album and it's more than a 10 track banger, I can promise you free to five of those songs are old throwaway tracks that they've just gone, oh, okay, holy shit, this has been on my computer for fucking years. All right, let's re-edit that and throw it on there. I can promise you, bro, because, I mean, there would be artists that have done it where they've gone, nah, I'm making a full fresh album. And that's probably why some artists take four years to make an album because they're literally making everything from scratch in the studio, getting the cunts in and doing this and that. Like, um, that, 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 that's... I'm not saying that that hasn't been done, but big albums, I can guarantee you, man, a lot of throwaways would be on there. They, they just they get re, you know, mixed and remastered and stuff like that. Um, I'm pretty sure Park as well was a big one take guy. Like I said, there's so many videos of Park in the studio, bro, and he's he was a workhorse that cunt. 
He well, he did not fucking oh, stop, yeah. bro. Park man, he was fucking record, 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 stop. And it wasn't fucking nah. Have a break, have a fucking chuff break, have a drink. Nah, it was all right. Get that next beat in, bang. And he was fucking pumping it. That's very interesting. That's to see. how you keep the energy up too, man. If yeah, you yeah, just yeah. go take after take after take, you're gonna event- you're gonna ramp up. You know, you get fucking, energized you get and fucking g'd up. What about um? You got another question we've been asked. I'm pretty sure mum had an interesting oh, fucking question. Oh yeah, our mum wanted. All right, this is um. Um, I'd like to hear what you, what you say. This is for all of us too. So, so um, my mum said for us to ask, uh, if you could have dinner with three people, dead or alive, <gasps> who would you pick? Like a Sorry, conversation. Bro, this is so trippy. And my miss is going to test to this because the few days before I came on this podcast, I was like, I have a question to ask because I, I actually put question. this yeah. exact same question in the questions that I asked before, but it didn't get, it, I think we didn't using, answer it. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but you used two other ones. Yeah. Mine, I already thought about this because I was about to sign up for Big Brother before I met Tori. And I was like, <laughs> and, and one of the questions was that. Um, mine would be Dave Chappelle. Oh, yeah. 100%. Um, Adam Sandler. <laughs> And this is random as, but Robin Williams. So these are all funny guys. And that's because I'm a, like a, I love, I appreciate comedy. I appreciate, yeah. But this was what I thought up in a few minutes of filling out an application <laughs> thing, right? What an interesting answer. Yeah, random, right? <laughs> you went with the comedians. Okay. The comedians, but it's that type of question. You could go for days. You could ask me in a week. And you'd be different. I'll yeah. tell you something else. But I think, mate, oh, actually, no, 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 no. Let me, let me swap this. Dave Chappelle, Adam Sandler, they have to stay. <laughs> they have to stay. But then I'd have to pick Kendrick Lamar. I'd have oh, to. Yeah. Random yeah. as. You wouldn't want them in the same room. It would be so weird. Yeah, but yeah. I'd, what are you? I'd, I'd pick all right, Tesla, Einstein, <laughs> and then um, yeah, all the, old the third one. The third one was fucking tough. I don't know for the third one. Maybe like fucking, I don't even know, to be honest. <laughs> what yeah. would you say? My one's pretty fucking boring. There's there's one of them that will never change, and that's uh, Lady Gaga. What the fuck? Yeah, Why? Because uh, honestly, bro, she is a fucking musical genius. She okay. the shit she does, bro. Like the fucking just dance and gonna be okay. Isn't that Kesha? Da, 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 da. Is it? Isn't that Kesha? No, that was Lady Gaga, <laughs> wasn't it? Is it Lady Gaga? Wait. No, we've got Kesha's TikTok. Yeah, Kesha's TikTok. Yeah, no, Lady Gaga's Just Dance. Right, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Dance. Gonna, bro, all that <laughs> shit, bro. She, oh, so my, mine are Lady Gaga, Michael Jackson, and Puck, right? Okay. Come on, um, mine was so shit. So, <laughs> the reason, <laughs> and the reason why I say Lady Gaga is like I said, because in my opinion, I personally think she is the female equivalent to MJ. Because the shit she was... So when she first come out, right, she was getting so much hate because she was wearing fucked up costumes, mm. the big wigs, she was wearing masks and shit. And everyone was like, who the fuck's this ugly bitch? But <laughs> now I realise, bro, when you go back and listen to the shit that she's fucking doing, she is a fucking genius, bro. She is full doing like hidden messages and shit in her music. And I reckon if I could sit in the studio with her for even just an hour, we would make the hit of the century. Because I would make the most weirdest fucking beat. It'd be like the weirdest like French house, like boom, chicka, boom, and she'd froth boom, over it as well. And, yeah, she, and then she would be and she would do her thing, hundred yeah. percent. And I would just sit back. I wouldn't even say anything. I just let her do it her way. And I know that she would take that weird random beat and she would make it a fucking hit, bro. Like um, what's her other song? Um, her one with Beyonce. Um. Hello, baby, when I went in, I want to say, is I don't want to fucking, then the phone is ringing, oh, and then okay, the dance yeah, beat comes okay, in, yeah, and then yeah. she's like, the beat is switching constantly between like trance to fucking hard style to fucking hard pop to synth pop, comes back to just normal pop, and she is constantly changing her voice, her the lyrics, uh, the vocals, okay. it's suiting a different, so she makes a one four minute song, but it sounds like fucking four or five songs in four minutes, so I think she... She would be a fucking genius. She's really record. underrated though. Oh, like, bro. Before you said anything bro, she's about an actor Gaga. now. She can act. She can fucking do it all, bro. Like, yeah. I don't know. But yeah, she just got real, like really looked over, but mostly because she was a bit out there, right? Mm-hmm. She was weird as fuck. Meet yeah. Yeah. But all the, all the geniuses are weird in a way. Yeah, exactly right. Like, literally, literally, you can't be normal and then have that creative genius in your head. Yeah, nah. Like Kanye, right? He's Everyone a Everyone shits on Kanye. Yeah. But, but he's smart fuck, as fuck, bro. Yeah. He, like, he's awesome. You don't, you don't, yeah, you don't get to where you are by luck, bro. You know he's now a billionaire. He's a billionaire oh, yeah. now. Doesn't does not surprise <laughs> me, bro. Those yeah. Yeezys, Yeezys alone, yeah. would be 
nearly up there. Him, yeah. and, he loves the fashion. him, and, him and Jay-Z are the only music billionaires in the world. So, and which if you think about it, that's kind of, because I thought there'd be a few. Well, isn't Dr. Dre too? He sold, no, 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 he sold Apple for fucking four fucking billion, wasn't it? What do you mean Apple? What did oh, he actually yeah, have? He, 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 he sold those to Apple. Sold, yeah, he sold Dre the Beats. Beats? Wasn't yeah. it like a billion dollar oh, deal? Yeah. Oh, I'm not too sure, but I, I know I've read before heaps of posts where, so when Jay-Z first hit one bill, like I think it was last year, maybe there was heaps of posts all over the internet saying Jay-Z is the first, or oh, well, other than Kanye, Jay-Z is the first hip hop, like billionaire and shit. So, but yeah. Maybe Dr. Dre probably would make sense, yeah. But um, you see how he almost fucking died, bro? Yeah, that's fucking fucked up. It wasn't a you brain, brain, brain aneurysm. aneurysm. Yeah, and what was fucking scary is that, is, is that just bleeding on your brain? No, 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 no. I don't know. They don't know what it is. Doctors still don't know to this day what it is. It, your brain just fucks up. You, your brain just fizzes out and just stops working and you just die. It's fucking scary. It can happen to anyone uh, anytime. anytime. That shit? It could happen right now. To someone. Oh, don't <laughs> me or you. Not me podcast. Wood, yeah. Wait till the podcast <laughs> yeah, is done. Touch wood. <laughs> no, I don't know, bro. Yeah, it's just shit like that would be the worst. Fucking scary, Don't man. take days for granted, man. Well, um, so I've got, uh, I've got a question too, which is off the topic of music, uh, which I wanted to ask because, so um, last week, was it? I think there was a pink moon. Oh, yeah, super moon. Apparently, it was a Scorpio moon. It was a Scorpio and Taurus Moon uh-huh. and apparently in each however many years or months, it, it, every star sign it's their particular mm-hmm. moon for the for that month because of however the stars align. Yeah, you're speaking my language. So right my now. one was so last two week last month it was a Scorpio and Taurus pink moon. I'm like, all right, I'm a Scorpio. And what I was thinking, and I specifically kept it for this podcast, this thought in my mind for ages. I even read it down somewhere because I didn't want to forget it. Um, do you? I know you would be Joey. Do you believe? In that shit, because when I read the Scorpio stuff, the f- it's so it's real, bro. <laughs> it's so me that it freaks me out. Like, how is it? How is everyone's star signs like matched to them? Let, let, like, let, how let, does me, that let make- me tell you something. A lot of people who dismiss astrology think it's just it's not just I'm a Sagittarius December. You're a Scorpio, November, whenever the fuck. We, you all, we all act like there's it. more it's than weird. one. There's yeah. more than one. So you have a chart, right? And your main star sign, I believe, is your rising sign. That's what it's called. But you also have a moon sign and a sun sign. And so my sun sign's like Libra, I think, or something like that. So I'm a Sagittarius, but I have other ones. And you have a big chart. Yeah. And if you read into your chart, it gets really accurate, bro. That's really what I'm accurate. Is it just, do you believe in that shit, Joey? Or? I, I do. Yeah. Really? I mean, only because, like, to a certain extent, I think that everyone ultimately you bring your own attributes to the table, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. they do nail, even myself, sensitive Sal over here loves a big cuddle. Like every, like everything that to me that they describe, like I'm cancer. Oh, yeah, by the way, what a shit star sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like who wants a cancer? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like anyway, but that's even, so Tori, she's a Scorpio. She's a Scorpio yeah. as well. She so, is a Scorpio. Yeah. She can so see that. She, she acts like a Scorpio. Yeah, like, 100. Fucking acts like, like, I act like one too. It's but, fucked. And, and you're not determining the way you act just be because of some information that you're given. Like you know, the, we, we act like this and then we read it and go, then, hold on a second. Like, yeah, it's trippy. And that's why that comes into, I don't know if this is even the same thing, but in answer to your question, I do to a certain extent, but I don't think you're defined by it, mm-hmm. but it does shape a lot of what, you know, who we are. But what you do with that is up to you. You know what I mean? It's but, like the fundamental seeds. Of yeah, blocks. but on the same token, like, Psychics, right? Is that simple a thing, or is that a whole different kettle some, of fish? Some are real and some are phony, bro. Because <laughs> yeah. then they know. Because then, other, other than um, astrology shit, right? Which feels like a psychic is telling you you're this way, you're that way, and then certain days you're gonna feel this or that. It's similar to what the, these psychics tell you, which is like, but some of them could be full of shit. So some are. I don't Some know. Astrology, astrology, I'm more on board with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The psychic person telling me, oh, you've just recently had a loved one pass away. Yeah, yeah, I nah, feel like uh, they're clutching at straws. Let me tell yeah, you this. Yeah. My, my Mrs. Rose, right, she's a fucking psychic, bro. My uh, <laughs> Josh, who we had on the podcast, Josh, right, she doesn't, like, try practice or anything, but it's just natural. So before Josh, shout out Josh, he recently got a girlfriend, uh, and he's been single our whole life. I've known him a long time. He's never cared about girls, nothing. He just didn't care. And Rose randomly goes a couple months ago, I reckon Josh is going to get a girlfriend soon. <laughs> and I'm like- and You no. said before that, Rose, bro. Apparently she- Always. She's, not, she's good with random numbers, stuff, random bro. numbers she, and shit. Fi- it's like, it's real shit, bro. Like, 
Mm. And this astrology stuff, you should really look into your chart, man, because fucking you'll be blown away, bro. And, and tarot cards too. I got an app, right? It's called Daily Tarot, and it gives you like your your daily, like you mm. pick the cards and shit, and it does readings for you. It's so accurate, bro. Like really, this shit's real, man. So, you go, you go, you. No, no, you go, you go. I was just thinking the whole psychic thing, right? It's crazy how what what determines like how come Rose got that gift, right? I wonder how. How it works, how it all works. This is obviously questions that are we obviously can't rhetorical. <laughs> but I'm, these are things that I'm, my mind does tricks, man. If we get on these topics, bro, I can go for ages. That's why when I love when we have this little segment on this podcast where you just go on for days about aliens, it's just solid answer. But I want answers anyway. You know what, <laughs> I mean? what do you think? I yeah. want the answers, man. Yeah, bro. So well, how do you feel then, Joey, about like life after death? Do you reckon, what do you reckon oh, happens next? Man, I... I could get real morbid real quick if I if I <laughs> dwell on it enough. I sometimes agree with Iggy when I think, mm, nothing. You happens. know, what if you have those sleeps just where sleep, sometimes right? if I smoke before I sleep, and then it just puts me straight out. I wake up for work like I just close my eyes. What if exactly. it's that? Like think about this, ready? Before you were alive. You didn't know you weren't alive. Exactly you weren't away right. in the hatch like a fucking exactly. baby egg. Exactly like a chicken. Right. Baby egg. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> a baby egg. But like yeah. you weren't waiting because your your consciousness doesn't not exist. There. There's nothing so there. Exactly I right. sometimes tend to drift off and go, what about reincarnation? What if deja vu is just you? Because if the world is infinite, right? And every then every situation has happened an infinite number of times. That means boys have sat and done a podcast like this an infinite number of times. There's no way it hasn't, right? Mm. If if it's been if it's infinite. So that means basically like you kind of I don't know, you're kind of just relive, if, reliving man. lives but from other people. That's why deja vu people trip out. Why do you have deja vu? This happened in another life. That's what, what what if we're already dead? <gasps> and this is a simulation. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I agree, man. Yeah. Like we, you, you, like, uh, see, like we said in the last episode, the movie Soul, right? Perfect example, right? That's a great movie because before you're born, you're like a little extraterrestrial entity, but we weren't. And even if we were, we've got no recollection of it. I can't sit here and but tell you, yeah, man, before it, I was but, born, bro, I was waiting did. in line, bro, we chilling. Did. No, but you, you don't know. The thing, the thing, you don't know. The thing, but that's what I believe. I believe, you don't know. I believe your consciousness is like, man, we're all the same consciousness. We're just the universe experiencing itself. You know what I mean? So we're all the same thing. We're just in our human bodies, which is like a vessel. A, a vessel. It's like mm. a hindrance. You know what I mean? So when we have our own individual thoughts and things, that's how. Flesh body, man, but we're energy. Once you die, man, your energy's got to go somewhere. Energy doesn't just cease to exist. It transforms, it yeah. moves on. We're all just one consciousness having some... Earth is like the simulate. It's like a game. We're fucking around down here. This Once is, this we is die... Level, this is level Earth. Yeah, and man. Then we gotta go it's to like the movie Soul when there's yeah, all this yeah. different shit and That's we're all spirits. Tripping. I really need to watch this movie Soul. Oh, oh, you do, bro. bro. You do. It's bro. great, man. It is a great film. Uh, me and my missus watched that and when I that, love that, that was movie. done, we will both just looked at each other. We are like, holy fuck. Like, I literally <laughs> felt... Like my inner soul, like pulsating, just going, let me out. Like, like <laughs> it was that, fucking those, awesome. Those bro. characters it's done so well. Those um Pablo Picasso characters, that, yeah. and it says like I'm I'm everything in the universe in a form that your human brain can understand. That's on point, bro. That's what yeah, it's, yeah. that's what it is, man. And why I love that movie so much too, because they used a musician that's based on a jazz player mm. trying to get big in the jazz game. Jamie Foxx too, man. It fucking beautiful, bro. That movie just hit me. Like you said before, that that movie ticked every box for me, bro. It had the music, it had the trippy shit that made me think about my whole life. It had the funny like comedy part to it. It had the classical Disney animations, bro. It even had a cat in there. It was great. Like, <laughs> even had a cat. Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah. And you, everything. You'd like it, I reckon. You'd oh like yeah. It. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's a, that. So because I was thinking about that because when I read the because my missus sent me the she's like oh it's a Scorpio full moon like that and then she and then she sent messaged me again she's like oh my god man yours is so fucking accurate. Like, okay, I'm like, send it to me. And when I read it, bro, I was like, man, fuck. I was yeah. like, fuck, this is fucking weird. Read your birth chart, bro. It's weird like, as it fuck. Depends on when you're born and where you were born and where the planets and shit were. You just read it, bro. So <laughs> many unanswered questions mm. that you just can't fathom. To even you're like, oh, what, what is this? What is that? Like, it, 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 does it all mean something, or is it just all random chance? And no know? way, it, know, it can't be random fucking, chance. It's no fuck. way, it's too perfect, bro. Like the moon in the sky, night and day. Animals, play like man, this shit is way too crazy. There's no way it's chance. Something created this. We did, but we're just so like busy with our own lives that most people don't really, unless you're 
you know, unless you're under the influence of some illicit substance or whatever, <laughs> and you actually, uh, you know, because you do, you do get carried away with your day-to-day lives and you don't think about this shit, but it, it does take a conversation like this to really make you think and appreciate life because you, you, we all know someone that's passed away and shit. Of course. And that alone just gives me goosebumps you bro, just fuck, thinking yeah. about, and, and our problems aren't shit. The fact, that Iggy, that you have a job, right, that most people would like be like, you know, if you have a job, that's a blessing in of itself. Yeah, we all yeah. got jobs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But then the fact that you're like, oh, there's not enough hours in the day. This is fucked. But most people, bro, are like, not most, but there's a lot of people out there that don't have the, the luxuries we have. But mm-hmm. like, you, like you, all these questions that we have, we have to ask extraterrestrial beings, all this shit. We're just day to day life, working like dogs, this and that. Mm-hmm. And we're. We're just kind of distracted. I think everyone needs to take a step back from the distraction and really think because what most humans, the human's worst enemy is time, Yeah. right? Time is our biggest enemy. I mean, like I said, I started making music when I was fucking 19. I'm now almost 26. And, I, and then, and that, and then you, I go, fuck, like I'm at that make or break point. Like I've got to do something with it now or I'm going to be fucking third. I'm going to be a 32 year old with fucking 10 kids still trying to make music in my basement. Like it's, this is like my make or break time. So that's why every now and then that's why, especially why I had to have a break from the music. I took a step back and I was like, okay, fuck. Like more people need to just do that. Even if you are just going to work and like, you're not really doing, pursuing a goal, but you can still as a human take time to step back and reflect and go, okay, shit. You know, I'm almost fucking 30. What, what am I doing with myself? And and sort of start making changes. Because then people, you hear the excuse all the time when people go, nah, man, it's too late. It's too late. Like even my boss, when my boss, me and my boss have this conversation all the time. He's always asking me about my music. And he's another one who's really interested because he's probably, I don't know, I'm probably the first, you know, not tradie, but I'd be the first construction worker who probably does something other than construction. So he's very curious. He's always asking me, man, so like, you, you know how we work fucking, you know, we get home at 8.30 at night. Like, do, how do you have time to make an album? I'm like, well, I do it every day. Even if I only have half an hour at 9 o'clock at night, I still do it. Just so I can keep my brain fresh with it. It's like training, that's, right? That's when you know you love it, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm, addi- I'm addicted to it. I'm literally addicted to it. Like, if, you know, obviously gaming comes close second, but I know <laughs> I love music way more because even... Like I said, now that I've played games for fucking 72 hours, I'm just like, oh, I don't want to play another game now. I've got to get back into it. I've got to get the EP done. So now I'm kind of back in that mode. Like, yeah, sweet. So I know I'm addicted and I love it. So my boss is like, man, like, so you do it every day. And he, he loves it. He's, he froths it. I'm, he's like, man, that's so cool. And he's like, what? He's not probably not even 40, like 38 maybe. And he's like, man, I really wish I had something I could do. You know, like I, I, it's just too late. I'm like, it's not too late. Never too late. It's Never not too late too for late. anything, bro. You If you really wanted to fucking, you could... I oh, know he's into motorbike riding. I'm like, bro, if you wanted to fly motorbike riding, you could do it, bro. Post you, clips on Instagram of motorbike just, riding. Just do it, man. Because people, you know? if you have that mindset where it's just work and work and you're scared of like it being too late, at the end of the day, it man, will we're, be all, too late. we're <laughs> all humans and we don't know why we're here. There, no one's stopping you from doing something at 50. You can go yeah. just drop everything and travel. The, you're just... Because who cares, man? Like, no one knows why we're here. Why does it matter? <laughs> Do what you want. I guess that's the biggest thing when you have regrets at the end of your life. You oh, can, if you're sitting back man. and father time has just done you wrong. And, and you're, and you're old, old. You and can't and get up and old, shit. Yeah, I wish I did this. I wish yeah. I did that. Then, like you said, time's our worst enemy. And it's just like, it, it's, uh, it, let's just say average. I don't mm. know how av- how old the average person lives to nowadays. I think it's... I think probably wouldn't even be 75. I Depends think. where you Turkey live. I think, a cu- I think a couple of years, I probably won't. I, I'm going to be happy if I reach 30, to be honest. But, listen, <laughs> right. um, well, but I think a couple of years ago when uh, when we were in high school, the average was 80. But that would have been for like an average healthy bloke. Yeah. See, it's not a long time, man. If it's you think not. of the whole, <laughs> the existence of our planet, right? The whole, mm-hmm. the whole shabam, right? It's like, it's not long and you kind of got to do something and it's easy to let it slip. You know, sometimes yeah. I think, because I'm just doing a normal job, not like you said, like not everyone has to do music. It could be whatever, right? Be but anything. I'm still trying to find, I'm still trying to find Your myself thing. in mm-hmm. terms of, because I don't know whether I get up for work every day and just because it's 5 a.m., I'm not chirpy. Is that normal? Yeah. But at what yeah. point does it become an actual drag? Like it, yeah, it's yeah, hard yeah. to determine, you know, when do you, you make that change. you don't actually want to get up. Yeah. yeah. And what do you make, like what do you do if you want to make a change? So it is hard and- like I do feel for those people that can't find their feet in that t- in that sense because it, it is hard and 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 no matter what other people say, still doesn't help. Bro. I appreciate 
all your guys' uh, sentimental words and all, all your words of wisdom, which I believe in thoroughly, right? Mm-hmm. Thoroughly. And you're going after your dreams. I love that shit. And not saying I'm not happy. I'm, I'm definitely happy, but I'm just saying I always wonder, <clears throat> like, what is my – I want to find a hobby. Like, if someone goes to me, what's yeah. your hobby? Um, partying, yeah, um, yeah. going to work. I'm not going to work, but – because I used to play soccer as a kid. Mm-hmm. You, you kind of lose that sport mm-hmm. after yeah, a while, yeah. but you kind of do need a hobby, whether it be music like you mm-hmm. boys, music or something. I, don't, I just don't have a hobby. I love seeing mates, uh, friends, yeah. work, but you, it is like, – I reckon I'm in the vast percentage of people that – are having the same problem in terms of you don't have a hobby, like nah, not that you, I don't a think, lot of people are that. I think. But do you have to have a hobby, or but you don't it, have it, to. But it helps, man. Right? I think it would help. Um, even if it's gaming, you like your games yeah. as well. But I don't even like that, well, that anymore. That's what I said. So to me, the music, I wouldn't classify the music as a hobby to me because that's something I want to pursue as a job and stuff, and mm-hmm. you know, get rich off it and be able to provide for my family with my music. So to me, the music thing is like my grind, my hustle. But the gaming is then my hobby. The gaming the ho- is my hobby That because now I play, I've picked up sport again. I, indoor soccer, I play Oztag, hobby, yeah, yeah. right? I used to froth soccer when I was little, right? And I was okay at it, right? But like I said, you grow, up, you grow out of it, you start drinking and partying. Yeah. But I picked it back up just because purely based because like I said, I'm scared of old grandpa time. I'm getting a little bit older. I don't want to be fucking 30 years old and I, I'm fucking... <sighs> Yeah. I work and fucking, I pick yeah. up a shovel and it's fucking, I'm sweating. I don't want, so, I, yeah. okay. And I'm, I'm a skinny fucking guy, but it doesn't matter about how how much you weigh or how your body looks, it's your insides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your, and like, how you feel like in terms of like internally, your emotions. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. So I could be 30 years old and only weigh fucking 65 kilos, but my insides are a fucking, uh, I've got the insides, I could have the insides of a 40 year old at age 30. Like I said, and I work with some dudes, bro, you see, and they put the shovel in and fucking- Oh fuck! And I'm like, give me the fucking shovel. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But I don't want to do that. And then I turn to their age, and then I'm that guy going fuck because I've fucked myself, ashfelding or not you know, just fucking around and not taking care of myself. So I picked up the sport, and obviously you could change the way you know I eat and stuff like that. But sometimes it's hard. Stay active. You got to stay, stay active. active. You know that's why I feel like yeah, the hobby. I say this to my girlfriend all the time, and you, she loves the gym, but she can't. She's not at the gym. All day, every day. She goes before work or after work for an hour, maybe an hour and a half max, and then she's back home. So I'm always like, man, I'm like, fuck, find something, anything, man. I don't, I don't care if it's painting, roller skating, fucking you want to be, become a professional dog walker. You want to walk heaps of other people's dogs. You, you, you need to find something just to keep you occupied. That That is all well and good in theory, <laughs> but I try to get myself... And it is an excuse because we mm. do have time. If you have time to do yeah, yeah. hold up, do all those hours and do music, there's no. But I feel like we we are our own worst enemy. Like we 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 limit ourselves with our thoughts. Hundred like, percent. And you put capabilities. You set yourself boundaries that no one else has told you but yourself. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, I wouldn't be able to do that. It's literally yeah. all mental. And me saying this to you, it's like, oh, how wise. I'm still going to go home and make the same mistake. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm, you know, I'm ma- but at like, least you're conscious of it. and oh, you yeah, can. Yeah. Because, but don't forget too, for, like a hobby doesn't have to be something that's forced as well. Like I didn't force myself to love music. I just loved the music so much. You wanted to learn more. I got to the point where I was like, I couldn't stop thinking. So example, so like I always, as everyone knows, it was the dubstep that got me into production. So I would listen to a dubstep song to the point where I wouldn't be able to stop thinking about how that song was made. And, and and because I knew, and most people just go, yeah, dubstep's just sounds, but I knew there was more to it. I knew it wasn't just a bunch of dudes at a computer going bleep, bloop. I knew it because uh, I could hear the, we- so Moby was the same. Me and Moby, right? Me and Moby at the party, doesn't matter where we were at, right? People would just be drinking and dancing and whatever. Me and Moby were the only two weird cunts at the party. We would have our ears to the speaker, <laughs> And we'd be going, bro, did you hear the fucking snare? And we'd be like, bro, did you hear that? Like, how the fuck did that happen? Yeah. Can you hear the hi-hat going? Yeah. And we'd be dissecting the song like we're dissecting a frog on a science table. And I got to the point where I couldn't stop thinking about how it was made. And I was like, fuck it. I'm buying FL Studio and I need to, I need to do this because otherwise I'm going to fucking explode because I'm just constantly thinking about it. And that's how it all started. But I didn't, for- I didn't force that hobby that was just my curious mind just eating away at me going, man, how does he do that? How does he do it? How did they do it? How did they do it? Yeah. Right. So a hobby can come to anyone at any age. 
You could turn 50 and you could go, I don't know, you could go do archery with your fucking, I don't know, your brother. Your brother takes your archery for the day and you go. And then you go, hold on a second. I'm really, really fucking liking this. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're back at the archery range the next week by yourself. Yeah. Not with your brother. It could be, you know, it can you just got to put yourself out there, I guess, it to start. Happen, try yeah. new I things. I guess if you stay in, inside and don't fucking, exactly. you know, get out there, then exactly. it's never going to happen. You got to try new things, bro. Fucking go do archery with your brother. Especially, go bowling, go ice skating. It's all shit you could try, bro. Like, especially with the internet, man. There's something for everyone. There really is. Any community, anything you're into, you can find something, man. You just got to put yourself in the right yeah. channels and, you know, find that spark, you know, yeah. something like our granddad loves fishing. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he loves he, fishing and painting. Isn't it? Yeah, he paints really good. Yeah. And he loves fishing. And, and how old? Oh, well, I don't know. 60, 70, 71 or 72? Yeah, that's the best, mm. like, older person's yeah. thing to do, right? That's legit what, you know, fishing, casting mm. a line and just... Relaxing. Paint. I can imagine him just painting. painting, but fishing simultaneously. Yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. Like, just <laughs> Well, like spewing for him, mate, because if he could drive, he'd probably just... Because he's retired now. If he yeah. could drive, he'd, he'd go could, by himself. He'd fish well. every day. So we should really get him, like, one of them little golf caddies or something. Hey, well, speaking yeah, of golf, yeah. I was kind of like that with golf, too. So a while yeah. back, I went and played a, a round of golf with just a few mates, and I was so shocked at how much I loved it. Yeah. I was like, this oh. is fucking awesome. But I just... I, I want to keep going, but I haven't had time. Like, yeah, I've that's, been doing other shit. That's funny you say that, because a few mates of mine have been Picked going to golf, the, no, yeah. the 19th at the driving range, and... Yeah. um. Oh yeah, they've been to Dunheaven in St Mary's, the the golf course there, <laughs> and yeah, like my, my mate in high school used to do it to the point where his dad used to take him there. He wanted to make it big, and he was pretty good. And then, you know, the other day my mate said, "Come down." I came down, and it was good. I liked it, but you do got to make the more effort. But I could see myself liking that a hundred percent. But it's easy to just fall back in your, your little cocoon Old at habits. home, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. then yeah. before you know it, you're doing jack shit. So yeah. I would go to the gym, but gym becomes a bit. You know, it's not like you go in there and you're relaxed. You're mm. you're working out. You're, yeah. you know, you're working, yeah. It's pain, right? But it does make me feel better, hence why I still go. But I still need something more. So I'm still trying to find that, whatever that is. But at the same time, like, it's all the journey, you know what I mean? Not everyone. That's, that's what I mean. Everyone thinks they have to have their whole life sorted. When I was younger, I'm 27 in July. Like, when I was younger, I was 18, and I would see a 26, 27-year-old, I'd be like, you have your whole life sorted. You've got probably a, three kids. You've got a beautiful house, beautiful missus, which I have, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but basically, like, you know, but then they don't, man. Like, even your parents, yeah. they're mm -hmm. just grown up babies. Like, yeah, yeah, I think of that all the time. Yeah. Like, they, because they, I used to think, oh, mom, mom and dad, they've held it down for us yeah. since I was born. We've never had a struggle, like, not one struggle. Food on the plate every night, Monday to Friday, not just fucking chicken Kievs in the oven. I'm talking home cooked meals from scratch. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. she never struggled. And I'm like, these people are just super hum like, like super they've human. Like super human. Yeah. But no, they're just nah, they're just they're struggling, but they're doing it in their but, own way. But they yeah. have it figured out exactly. because yeah, right. with with age comes, you know, you're more wisdom. wise, wisdom. Yeah. So you have it all figured out. We're still babies, man. You don't have to have it figured out by the age of thirty. Thirty yeah. Like a percentage, a little percentage of your life. So it depends. sometimes I get in my own head. That's my fault sometimes, yeah. you know? It depends on, on who you are. It happens differently for everyone, man. Whether you're 30, 40, 50, man, you can get into all kinds of things whenever. It's just people, we put these restrictions on ourselves, man. We let society tell us how we should be. And it's like, you don't got to listen to that, man. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want. I was going to quickly check if I got any questions because the girls are fucking trolling me with their questions. I haven't fucking... <laughs> I'm keen, keen to answer some random questions. The girls the girls were just trolling on my one. So, might have to go... Do you have any more? <laughs> Aaron says, who really is Joey? Khalifa. <clears throat> Khalifa. Let me tell you who I am. <laughs> <laughs> of course, my girlfriend. How blessed do you feel to have me? Yes, very blessed, Chloe. Sorry, yeah. Is it true? The only person... The only reason you're on the podcast is because of your girlfriend. Okay, listen. How much do you love your girlfriends? <laughs> let's let's set this the bar straight, right? I think I fit in well, that well with this group that I feel like if anything was to happen, they'd side with me anyway, Tori. So, no. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, no, well, we, we, we hit it off fucking from the start. Straight away. But that's, that's, um, straight away. Yeah, it, it is. It, it was coming in originally was pretty intimidating because like I said, the group, the sheer size of the group is crazy. And, and, and in the past, I've only had male groups. And then the misses, the girlfriends, their little side attributes that they, they come into this social queue every now and then. And oh, they did their own but thing. Then, yeah. But then, like, with, with your group, it's like the girls and the guys 
just all one together at one, fucking, yeah. like a family, you know what I mean? Yep, and then yep, it was just yep. like, everyone was so comfortable with each other and it was just nothing like I've ever seen, which is real comforting. And, and I'd never felt like awkward at all or nothing. And, but I guess you could say Tori is the only reason I'm here, but at the same time, I had a lot to do with this. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, let's put it this way. I'm on the podcast and not you, Tori. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Did you get um, more questions? I got, I got, I think I got one more. Um, well, well, we could ask this to Joey, actually. Erin asked this. We, she obviously didn't watch the last podcast. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Okay, yeah, we answered this one last You one. said fire. Yeah. I said flying like flying. a fucking bird. What would you? God, this is so hard. <laughs> this is so hard. I would have... Super strength. Not Speed. Even super... Oh... I would have invisibility. Yeah, that's a good one. Invisibility. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll have a beer. Um, yeah, i got to drive, but... So have I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Um, yeah, I reckon invisibility. It seems a bit lame, but... It's cool. <laughs> I reckon, because sometimes you want to be a fly on the wall. Have you ever wanted to be a fly on the wall to, like... <laughs> Legit, how that saying is so like, oh, I wonder what these people have said about me or whatever. And it's just like, not that, not just that, but that's just a little example, you know? Um, but I could think of so many more, but right now I think it's invisibility because you can, you can go undetected. You, you can go into like area 51 and just be like, yeah, fuck yeah. but then again, the aliens could probably see you and shit because you're invisible and yeah. they're invisible. How do we know there's someone that isn't invisible here right now and they how would we know what if someone out there has superpowers but it's like the movies and they don't let they anyone know keep it how would we know hmm. it could be and um our cousin and Alex our cousin Art, yeah yeah I think this is a pretty good question um I think this is a fucking hard yeah, one yeah it is a hard one it's very strange you said what <laughs> what is thinking and <laughs> <laughs> and can Fuck and hell. can thought mislead one's perception of reality okay yeah so the whole thought thing leading misleading that's 100% true because sometimes people, example, it's you can just think of something, right, the, and take it the wrong way to what someone has said or what you've seen. It's happened. It's happened to everyone. Yeah, you're, I feel you're a that. fucking lie if you said you haven't. Like, how many times have you, has, I don't know, maybe someone in school said something and you've kind of gone, oh, what the, what the, like, what can't, like, and you sort yeah, of take yeah. it seriously, but they're having a laugh. Like, example, me, right? It probably happens. People probably think this of me all the time because I'm a sarcastic piece of shit, right? And I, I fuck around a lot, as you know, Joey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I joke around a lot. I fuck around. But j because you know me, yeah, yeah. you know- How to that, perceive that. You know I'm yeah. fucking around all the time and I don't mean half the shit I say unless I'm talking serious like I am now. You know, you can read my body language, the way my face is. You know that, just like I know that about you now. But if you don't know me, right, especially when I- This is why I hate starting a new job. Because when I go there, I'm very, very quiet because I don't know because my personality is pretty out there. So I, I keep to myself because I don't know. I could be working with a guy who doesn't really have a good sense of humor and I say something and they could get the shit and they take it the wrong way. And then next thing you know, I'm working, I'm stuck working with a guy who hates me. Right? <laughs> so I'm very quiet and reserved and I let, I let people start to show themselves. And after like a couple of months, then I'm a fuck with. I'm just wild. I'm a piece of shit. I'm just always having a laugh. Yeah. So that I do believe that one's thought can mislead your perception of reality or whatever. But the what is thinking thing? What is I it? I don't know. <laughs> hey, we don't know. Because do I'm we? thinking right oh, now, yeah. but I can't answer it. So that's a fucking hard um, question, um, bro. I mean, Is it a little voice in your head? Because people always say about the voice in your head, but I don't actually ever hear anything in my head. No, but you like, know it's there. I don't have a you voice know. going, you fucking like, yeah, but, but <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you have conversations with yourself when you're thinking? Do you say, oh, I'm going to put, I'm going to grab this and put this over here. You I'm know, well, when I make music, it's bad. I literally talk to myself out loud. That's why my girlfriend freaks out when I make yeah, music. But, but I'm going, oh, I'm going to put the drum here. And then she goes, oh my God, like what the <laughs> fuck? Like when I make music, I'm like a fucking alien. <laughs> you, you I got need, tentac but you need tentacles that. coming out and shit, like touching <laughs> buttons and shit. So yeah, that, it's a hard question, man. I don't know. I think it's similar in that uh, thinking can, you know, change your perception of reality because your thoughts are unique to you. So, like, I think anxiety is a good example. Like, if you're mm. anxious and you're paranoid all the time, that's just you, man. Like, the outside world, you have yeah. nothing. That, you're anxious that this guy hates me, this guy hates me. He doesn't hate you. He doesn't give a fuck. He's just yeah. living his own life. But your own thoughts are making you think that that's reality, yeah, that yeah, he yeah, hates yeah. you. I feel that. You know what I mean? But uh, what is thinking? Yeah, fuck, who knows, eh? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just literally, like... It's art. It's artificial 
it's oh, you can't even use the word thoughts because then you're like, no, but what are thoughts? <laughs> yeah. Like it's like it's artificial intelligence. Everyone, <laughs> everyone has a subconscious, a subconscious, right? Conscience. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. So like basically that drives that drives you your whole life, right? But it depends how much. Like for example, when I when I smoke weed, right? I it it makes me like more aware of other people's feelings, more aware of myself as a human, as mm. as a whole, how I'm doing. If I have things that I haven't addressed in life, mm-hmm. the way that, it helps you. That, yeah, I'm, yeah. That, that I'm hiding. It's like, hey, bro, shines a spotlight right over it. Mm. And I'm forced to, it, to tend to it. You know what mm. I mean? Because when I'm sober, I still have that um, voice in my head, mm. but it's way less of a voice. Yeah. Because it's not as loud, you're it's not distracted as loud, yeah. with everyday life, blah, blah, blah. Yep. But you don't obviously need weed, but I'm just saying that it, it obviously, mm-hmm. um, you know, intensifies it. But it's only when you just, just weed happens to allow that more. But it does take you to just like reflect sometimes, mm. like we were saying before. And that makes you more aware of those thoughts. But whether those thoughts, that thinking, whether all that is negative or it can really hinder someone like and, and make their life heaps less than what it could be mm-hmm. like it but it's so easy it's one of those things you can you're beating a dead horse with it if you're talking to someone with some mental illness or anxiety which a lot of people suffer from it's like something that like i don't think i suffer from anxiety i do i do get anxiety like every mm-hmm. normal person does but like every single human every single, gets anxiety yeah. it's it's, but, it's, it's, it's a human emotion. Yeah, and a lot of people yeah. would maybe use that as a cop out and blame anxiety. Oh, I have anxiety. Yeah, okay, you do, but you don't have anxiety. Like I've seen yeah. people with anxiety that have anxiety attacks, and it's like uncontrollable. Like it's like it's I a can't panic even, attack. I can't relate, bro. So, and yeah. I don't know how to. And I've handled it in a shit scenario sometimes. Like it wasn't bad, but I remember me and Tori going to the city, and Tori freaks out when we're in the city, and I was driving, and I was driving her manual car, and I drive a manual car, mm-hmm. but as you know, the clutches vary. And cars, they feel different. Yeah, so yeah. I was bunny hopping a few times, right? Yeah. But then we were in the city. I took a wrong turn, blah, blah, blah. We were five minutes away from the hotel and she was freaking, right? <laughs> oh, really? Then I started, because she was freaking and you I was on the edge. freaking. Then I got road rage at some guy behind me. So I'm looking, not yeah. even at the road anymore. I'm looking behind me in my back <laughs> going, what the fuck? And she's freaking out more. So I didn't handle that right. But that's only because I don't know how, um, you know, the brain works when you're under those kind of pressures. So- mm-hmm. It is crazy. And that's all from, she didn't see any sense. What she was doing, how she was acting. I know she wasn't acting out of spite. She couldn't, she was being like kind of abrupt she to me. But that was because yeah. she was freaking. Mm. But her, it takes over, bro. Like she yeah. was a different person. And that's like, goes to show, that's a poor example. But some people suffer from that daily, man. Oh, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. that, uh, imagine the self-confidence you have if you're on, you're constantly doubting yourself from, you know, anxiety. But like you said, Dizzy, it's like, it's kind of like yourself. You've made it up before you've even done it. Yeah. That's why I was reading this yep. book called The Power of Now. And when I, done, when I fucked my chest, I, I tore my peck off my shoulder bone while snowboarding in New Zealand like two years ago, right? And when I was, when I was off work for like 10 weeks, Ooh. I was forced to read, right? Mm-hmm. I never read, but I, I wanted a life application book. I can't get into fiction, so I'd rather watch movies if it's fiction, but life application book, if I can ap- apply it to my life all well and good, I'm drawn in. Mm-hmm. The Power of Now tells you about how you shouldn't identify yourself with your thoughts. Mm-hmm. They're just this they're, they're it's not like a second like opinion really your thoughts. But then how you act is what you really yeah. want to well, do. Well they like, say you should never live in the future because you'll always be in angst mm-hmm. of getting to your goals quicker than what you are. you all you have is now. If you live in the past, you're gonna be filled with resentment or yeah. you know, depression or all we have now, and they talk about the trees and the plants, right? These things that are living but not living, right? Mm-hmm. Do you think trees are sitting there and blowing in the wind going, oh, today is going to be rainy? It's like, <laughs> no, they, they are being. They are truly at being with themselves in the present moment. They have no care in the world. They grow, whether it's sunny, snowy, it's they rainy. Still grow. That's a, I've never thought of it like Legit. that, man. That's and then, a fucking so awesome analogy, it, but, bro. But it is hard wow. to apply because I'll be reading this shit and I'm like, yeah, like, like you with your yeah. with your uh, tarot cards, and yeah. your astro, you know what is it? Astrology. Yeah. I'm reading shit, and it's like, and it'll have this little symbol saying, and the symbol means it tells you at the start of the book when this symbol um, is applied in the book, it means take a second to think about what was just said in the book. Okay. So yeah, it'll cool. have a quote, and cool. it'll say, yeah. So every now and then, at the end of every chapter, it'll have this. I don't remember exactly what it was saying, but it was saying something along the lines of like. We don't have 
problems in life, air quotes, problems, right? They're only life situations, but we make them problems yeah, by constantly yeah, thinking yeah, about the yeah, future. Yeah, yeah, Iggy, yeah. you got a big song, a big EP coming up, right? You're going to kill it whether you whether you like it or not, all right? Yeah. It, you're passionate about it. That's what you do, but right? I just overthink but you and think then it. I get stressed about Bro, it for no yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah okay. And, yeah, wow. and, and that goes to show that you legit, it's just the anxiety. It's like when I went yeah, yeah. Sky, uh, sky uh, skydiving years ago. I was freaking. Oh, so was I. How bad is it? Eh? Oh, bro. bro. Even I was now. chewing my nails and shit. And I never chew my nails. I chewed every nail to the <laughs> bone, bro. I was waiting to board the plane going, like a cartoon yeah, where yeah, they yeah, fucking, yeah. like, yeah. that shit was but, crazy. Uh, but once you do it, it's exhilarating. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, it's this isn't even about this. We're going back to just like natural everyday, like just thinking about f- future shit. It is so hard to be present. Like, and too many people identify themselves with their thoughts Oh, I'm this, I'm that, blah, blah, blah. No, you got to, the first step is being aware of it. N- like sort of like nubbing it in the butt and being like, all right, listen, I'm not my thoughts. Mm. Um, and you got to try and just be, but it is so hard because, no, it, because it, I'll read it and the next minute I'm freaking about work. Or, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, it yeah. is hard. It's and, hard to apply. Yeah, and hundred. It, but it, it's good to have though up your sleeve to think about because sometimes I'll be freaking and I'm like, you know what? Like, it is what it is. I'm going to do my best at whatever it is. Or I'm just going to... Like this podcast. To be honest, I was rocking up thinking, man, it's a different uh, thing having like when you're mic'd up and you're having like headphones in. Mm-hmm. But if we're just talking with no headphones and no podcast... It's what we do every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But it's then I'm like, even coming here for a bit, not much. It's like I was sweating on the palms. But I was like, wow. Like, what to expect. Yeah, yeah. What, what do I expect? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But then I go, you know what? Fuck it. I rocked yeah. up with a half a bottle of whiskey and yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Let, let's just do it. You know yeah, what I mean? And, and look That's how it's it. gone. You know, it's flirt, but uh, I don't know, man. Once again, too, for people listening as well, this is completely unscripted. The, the, the only thing that we read up your guys' questions. So yeah. fan questions, viewer questions. That's the only thing we do just to add a little bit of We're spice. We're just talking into, shit, man. And to just... And that's why, yeah, this is this is great, man. Like I said, this is how we're talking right now. Me and Joey have done this a hundred times in the past two years. Yeah. Sometimes not sober, but most yeah, of the time. <laughs> but it happens, bro. So it's yeah. the same thing. But it, that, that was quite impressive, though. When this podcast first started, I thought, oh, I've only listened to well-known podcasts, and I'm like, I wonder how the flow is going to go. To see, with but it, it's, yeah. you've engaged me in every in every podcast, which is you know what I mean. So. Conversations do that, man. It's just natural yeah. and. Um, of what you're saying about your thoughts a similar like trying to be present is so important and it's such a good skill to have and it's something mm-hmm. everyone should really try to build we only exist in this present moment and it's a similar thing that you're saying with your thoughts that you should do with your emotions so if you're feeling upset or angry or something pisses you off you acknowledge okay this made me angry this is upset i see that now i got to let it go and move on and that's kind of how you have to train yourself to be same with your thoughts your feelings you got to acknowledge it but yeah. don't let it consume you. Of course. Well, I, I mean, I, I can thank Chloe for this and so my girlfriend. So for the past, I've always been a very reserved guy where I don't talk about how I feel. I don't tell anyone. Even I could I could be in the shittest mood, but I can rock up to the party or work and you would not be able to tell mm-hmm. I'm in a bad mood because I, I can put on a front, like a face. I can act like I'm happy even when I'm not. I was only thanks to Chloe recently, the past two years even, where she's really helped train me to okay if you're angry about something doesn't matter how silly or what it is even if i just haven't done the washing for the week just let it out just tell me say hey that's give you pissed me off and I, and I just couldn't do it for ages and ages and ages to like breaking point to the point where i was frustrating chloe so bad to the point where she was like if you don't fucking start talking bro like something's gonna change in this relationship like you gotta start and it's really helped me as a fucking person bro i have never felt as good as i do now bro because now I talk, bro. Like I let it. I let people know when they piss me off or at work. And if I, hey, I didn't like that. Like you know what I mean. But that's why you got to be able to. Um, if you can dish it out, you got to be able to take it too. Oh, like, for example, yeah. if some cunt, if I say a joke and then some guy pulls me aside later and goes, "Hey, man, like I didn't appreciate that." I'm like, fuck, bro. Sorry, man. Like you know, I didn't mean it, but like I'll like, acknowledge that and I won't make those type of jokes around so, that person. You know what I mean? So yeah, being present. I mean, going all the way back to the fucking question, this all comes, this all stemmed from what is thinking. So <laughs> fuck, I don't know what it is, but, but that, we're doing it right now. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that? was thinking. My cousin Alex. Yeah, cousin, oh. yeah. So shout out Alex, bro. He's listening all the way from Byron, which his brother is the Viking and three, which he's been doing music for a hot minute. Yeah, he's been, he's been killing it. I'm pretty sure he's working on an album. He's another one. Is, he, is he working on an album? Yeah, he's been working on an album for like the past two years, hasn't he? 
I don't know. He's been quiet though, he, so he yeah, might have something. He's been quiet. So I'm pretty sure he's working on an album. So shout out, man. So um, shout out to our cousins. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up too, right? This happened to me <laughs> a couple of days ago, right? I went to Kmart with my missus, Wim Penrith, and I was getting things from my bits of accessories for my costume for tomorrow. <laughs> and and so the character that I'm going as in some. He, he also rides a skateboard. So I was tossing up between getting a skateboard, <laughs> right? Yeah. No, no, no. There was one in Kmart, right? And I was, and it was yellow, the one that my character uses. So um, I was going to contemplate buying a $10 penny board and spraying it yellow. And I was looking at this and I was like, I walk past the aisle in Kmart and I see the skateboards on a rack. And I'm like to my girlfriend, I'm like, oh, hey, look, here are the skateboards. And all I hear behind me is just some random lady go, skateboards are stupid and dangerous. <laughs> And before, what a Karen. And, and before before <laughs> I turned around, I was going to say, because obviously I could tell that she was a woman and older, I was going to say, because like I said, I'm, I'm a smart ass, right? So the first thing I can think of is like how to ba- like bag this bitch out. I was going to say, yeah, you probably think that because you're just too old to ride them or something. I was going to say something, just being a <laughs> piece of age. shit, right? Yeah, yeah about age, just get, have a dig at her. And thank fuck I didn't because I turned around and she had one of those fucking four-legged walking sticks and one eye missing. Oh, oh my God. And I my went, God. oh. So she was obviously like, and she had a carer. So obviously she was like some type of special ed. And I was like, wow. I was like, oh my and God. And if you said something, you would have got judged have by the carer yeah. also. The carer would have been like, you piece of and shit. And I was like, oh. <laughs> You're going to hell. So that goes to just, yeah, be, just don't fucking, you know. Don't, you don't judge a yeah. don't, react, don't react on your first even, sport all the time. Even but. though she has no excuse. Shout out to this girl if yeah. she's listening, right? <laughs> just because you have one eye and you're aging like the rest of us doesn't give you the right to, be, to kill yeah. someone's anime dreams to dress yeah, up exactly as right. who are you dressing up as on the weekend? Uh Killua. Killua? Killua. So um well, I just found it funny, bro, because I was gonna react, but luckily I didn't. And then I looked at my <laughs> girlfriend and I'm just going like I was trying not to laugh. I was like, fuck man. I was like, I was about to fucking like abuse a, an old pirate, <laughs> like an, an old, old pirate, pirate. And, like an eye patch and shit. I was like, fuck. <laughs> So yeah, I just I just had to say that too because I was a fucking random ass story, man. Fucking hell. Do you got any more questions, DZ? Or was that all? Uh, I think that was all of them. That was all of them. Fucking hell, man. How long? We've almost hit two hours. No oh, fucking two hell. hours. Does it feel like two hours? No, <laughs> not at all, bro. This is like <laughs> a time. It flies, time. Like bro. It thing, it flies, bro. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, man. I mean, uh, do you got any more music, DZ? Coming. Or are you waiting now for the collabs and the EP? Yeah, and stuff? pretty much. I don't got nothing at the moment. Oh, I, I sent you that single. That is that a is that a beat off Jensen? Yeah. Okay, I thought so because I saw you called the song the folder purple, and then he uploaded a beat saying purple. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, like, no, okay, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was there was one beat DZ that I sent both you and Iggy, and do with it what you will. In other words, just do it. All right. <laughs> you got to jump on the Blue Lights remix that uh, Wombat yeah, jumped yeah. on, bro. It's like one of those melancholy vibes. Like I said, I, f- I, I, I love I, I love. I watched it. that. I fuck with that video, yeah. Yeah, bro. I don't know. There's certain beats that I see, I hear now that I'm like, oh, DZ would be hectic on that. <laughs> I'm man. so rap biased, bro. It's fucked. To the point where sometimes I feel like I'm a one-trick pony and I get, and if someone was like, my, like Tori doesn't really vibe with my music as well as hers because she has a more diverse range. Yeah. So sometimes I feel like, yeah, it's just the same shit. Yeah, the blue light. That's how I feel. That was sick. Right. You want to wrap it? Wrap it and cap it. Uh, all right. Yeah, we'll wrap it. I've got to double check. I've got no more questions. Yeah, so my questions were, of course, all the girls is fucking around. Uh, is there any... Are there any... The, the soap dirty floor. The soap yeah, clean. Yeah, no. <laughs> so I feel like I get trolled and then this kind of gets all the proper questions. <laughs> you notice mm. I always get trolled by the women. Well, yeah, that's all of them. All right, man. Well, fuck. Hey, this, I hope this might be our longest podcast yet because uh, with this yeah. one, there's going to be minimal editing because I've just been getting up and playing. Mm. Pause, our camera's died once again. Um, I've been yeah. getting up just going, pause, stop, pause. We haven't even had a break. Yeah, you usually, we just, usually, bro, I haven't gone up to the yeah, piss. That's what I, I, like nothing big. He's brought me drinks. Yeah, I, fu- um, I hope this, this might be our longest one. I hope. This I is a great one, man. Fuck uh, yeah. This we, might, this might I, hit an hour 40. An hour fifty, maybe. And what was the second highest? I think our longest one so far is a hundred and four minutes. All right, so basically, in the future, if your podcasts look like they're about to scrape one thirty nine, I'm going to come in. Yeah, cut this out. Unplug it. No, I mean, but I'm excited for what the future holds for you guys, eh? And, oh, and yeah. I'm hundred percent a fan. And when you when you have mates that 
support you with no benefit of their own, with no agenda, no nothing. It and makes just, it a lot easier. And for just us. happy, humbling to see you grow as well. Like, yeah, to, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's 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 good to see, man. And and you have all the support that you need. You know, in both family and mm-hmm. friends mm-hmm. and. Definitely friends. Um, oh and yeah, and we we appreciate every bit of oh, that. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, like I said, it makes it so much easier for us because, like I said, the, the first people you got to impress are your mates, yeah, and then the rest comes. You know yeah. what I mean? So it, it is awesome. Um, I dare say we will we will have you back. I think what I want to do with you next year, which would be super fun, is we have you as a double guest. Yeah, with someone else because I think then we could probably go even longer, yeah, and we could just sure. we could probably do like a three hour whopper. Yeah, but um, that might be in a few episodes. Um, yeah. well, don't I you think, have plans as well for like? So every ten episodes, we want to spice it up. Yeah, because I want to do something different. Do something a little bit different, but I don't want to strain like because the whole the whole like a uh, theme for our for Firecast is just chill, chat shit, vibe, drinks. Yeah. It's just a bunch of it's just what we do on the weekend just recorded for mm. other people's pleasure. Yeah. I don't want to stray too far away from that vibe, no. but I also do want to slightly every 10 episodes, maybe even every 5 episodes if we get a bit more popular, where we can just do something a little bit different where maybe we talk about more of a certain topic a theme. or we have a theme or like would you do that with like fan not fan questions, but you can even go Obviously, you'd create your own mostly, mm. but even if you go, you know what, let's just leave it up to the fans. What do you think we should discuss on this week? Yeah, and yeah. then you can have those. You know what I mean? Because yeah. so far you've done pretty good with the topics that you've discussed, considering you know you're just starting out and you, you know. Yeah, well, an- another thing which is a good idea, I think, which would be super chill, is same thing. We do it for a week in advance, though. Whoever we've got coming to say when you come back, right? We do on the Monday or whatever. We all post ask your questions and we collect them for a whole week. Say we record Friday and then we can get like a big fucking wheel <laughs> of all the questions and you just spin it. And if your question gets lands, we answer it. If it doesn't, then just bad luck. Kind of uh, just a bit, just a bit that's more dope. interesting. No, that's just fun. Cause that'll spin draw the big pe- wheel. That'll yeah. draw everyone in more, you know what I mean? Something well. simple, cool, but simple. Cause I don't want to stray away from the whole mm. chill, chill vibe that we've got yeah. going on. You know what I mean? So um yeah man um thank you for coming on bro that yeah, was fucking that was, that was a pleasure episode. my pleasure man <laughs> I was waiting for this for <laughs> ages awesome, bro, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. so that was firecast episode twelve, 12. I never fucking remember the episode <laughs> best, man. best episode one. yet yes thank sir you, yeah. thank you very much brother and peace out boys sure. <laughs>